Welcome to Under the Lid, a rat tail podcast about board games and everything that's inside. Join your host, me, Adam Tebow, and our special guests on episode number seven, where we'll dive under the lid of tabletop RPGs. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. This is Adam, and I've got two special guests with me. That's right. We're ending the podcast, and Gmail, let me bring on two guys to talk about tabletop RPGs and the experiences that we've been having with them. I've talked about it plenty of times on the podcast, and now you actually get to hear their voices. First off, we've got Raphael. Raphael, say hi to the people. Hey, hey Adam. Call me, call me, hey, hey. Call me special again. <laughs> <laughs> you are special, oh. and our time with these games has also been special. Nice. I'll say that. Nice. A little bit of a teaser. Hi, everyone. And also, the other... Uh, hey. hey. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> and then our other guest... Dave. What's up? It's Dave. It's me. It's Dave. <laughs> Classic. So, I hadn't Dave. actually used your guys' names on the podcast before. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't really. The I listeners really just care. knew you guys as the guys I played Gloomhaven with and Madara yeah. and Kingdom of Death Monsters. So, so you got to use. Now everybody has a name. You get to use all my stories and I don't get any of the fame. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> fame. That's absolutely fucked up. Fame. <laughs> Well, now you guys are on, and you get to tell those stories nice. about those three games that I mentioned, the games that we've been playing for the last, man, two and a half, three years. It's been a while. Together? It's been a long time. I think we actually later started because Raphael was in my house, and I was, like, mentioning something about Gloomhaven, and you're like, oh, should I play Gloomhaven? <laughs> and then... And and then here we are. <laughs> that was a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it was... It was <laughs> Dave used to host weekly board game nights. At, I still at have place. them, and then not, yeah, not as frequent anymore though. And then yeah. one time I think I was over, and we just started talking about Gloomhaven. And I don't know how it, I don't know how it went from that to that was right after I left for California. I think it was because you broke up with her girlfriend at the time, and you were like played with her, and you're like, I need new memories with Gloomhaven. Oh. Like that. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that, right. That <laughs> sounds right. I don't know if you want to include. You don't. You don't have to include that, that in the podcast, sense. but you know, maybe you can. <laughs> You can include it in the podcast. I don't care. That's really funny. That <laughs> right, that, right, that actually there. might have exactly been what it was. I'm like, I need to. <laughs> oh man, that was when we started with Gloomhaven, and then we moved into the other games, obviously. And the you know, the pandemic hit in between that time as well, so helped us maintain a regular cadence. Yeah. I guess we've kept with it since. I keep track of how many times I played board games. Guess well, I played with other people too. I think together we almost had like 90 wins and. In Gloomhaven, something like that. Ninety wins. Yeah, I feel like we didn't. We, yeah. didn't lose very, we didn't lose very often. We did not lose very often, but that just means like think about how many times we played that game. It looks like Dave, I recorded ninety nine plays and eighty six wins. It's hmm. pretty good of Gloomhaven. That's kind of yeah. nuts. It's almost only wins. I feel like. Almost, almost. I feel like we like either never lost on regular mode or maybe lost like once on normal mode. Then we switched to hard, right? We had a stretch where I hard. was like sawbones and we switched to hard. There was a stretch in there where we were not. When we switched going. to hard, I feel like is when we started losing. Yeah. And we tried to bring on a fourth 1.2. I don't know if we necessarily lost with that, but. Oh, yeah, Dave's friend. It made it more difficult. Yeah. So. You couldn't hang. Right, we we got to introduce. We got to introduce these games. What the fuck? Yeah. So, the three games again: Gloomhaven, Kingdom Death Monster, and Midara. Those are the three that we decided to play. We started with Gloomhaven, and then we moved into Kingdom Death Monster. I don't. Know, I think Raphael brought it up. How did you find out about that game, or what? What made you want to? I think I that literally game? googled like, I just played Gloomhaven. What next, or something, something like that? I was like. Ga- game okay. similar okay. to Gloomhaven, and then I think that's how I ran into Kingdom Death Monster. <laughs> I can't even remember if I was the one that brought it up or someone else brought up a bunch of options, and then like I was like, "Oh, Kingdom Death Monster looks sick." I honestly can't remember specifically what it was. That's how we did the third one. That's how we did Madara. That's how we got to Madara. Yeah, I brought up some Actually, options. Actually, no, yeah, someone else, someone else did bring up Madara, and I think maybe I did find I was the one that found Kingdom Death Monster. Dude, Kingdom Death Monster is like the wildest. Like you can't get any more like nerdcore than that name for a board. You can't like <laughs> nothing else just says what it is <laughs> with as much confidence and intensity as Kingdom Death Monster. <laughs> <If> you... <laughs> that, 
<laughs> game absolutely like lives up holy to its name. like holy shit <laughs> if you want to let someone know that you are just like a filthy board game nerd just tell them that that's what you're playing i'm playing kingdom death monster and it'll i think it'll deliver the point very effectively uh, i think gmo was surprised do you guys know what rank kingdom death monster is on board game geek or have a guess you asked us this yeah. a while ago and i was oh, surprised I yeah I was it's very like surprised. In the, it's like in the single digits or something like that, isn't it? It's not that high. It's not think, that high, but... I think it's like 58 or something like that, which is still pretty high. Isn't it in the single digits for some category? It is exactly 58, dude. What the fuck? Are you looking? Well, I had it up earlier because I was oh, okay. looking up the publisher <laughs> or, or like a designer oh, yeah, of the right. year. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense because you're, you're talking about that one. Yeah. I would not rank it 58. Well, we'll get into that. But first, we have to talk about... Midara, Unintentional Malum, the game that we ended on. Act 1, actually. Oh, so I looked this up because I'm talking about this one. They actually published or are publishing the two more acts to make it a trilogy. So it's going to have Act 1, Act 2, and Ooh. Act 3. Act 1 had five chapters already. That already seemed like a, a lot of board game. We didn't even and finish, right? Adding... We no. got like chapter <laughs> not... 3, maybe? We were almost through chapter 3, I think. We got more than halfway. I'll, yeah, I, I'm look, almost positive the, about that. If you look at the item progression, we got pretty far down. The we got all the way like, to the end, <laughs> like, all, almost. Yeah, almost. There was, like, basically got to two the tiers end. left, yeah, right? There was, no, there's only one yeah, tier one left. left. Like, there's only one tier left, but it was like all the I don't know. Okay, anyways, so Madara, unintentional Malum, Act One, mouthful. Designers: Clayton Helm, Brooklyn Lindbergh, Brenna Munker, and Ian Tate. So. I'm going to talk about this game, and then I'll pass the mic over to you guys so you guys can talk about your games. This game is a heavily story-driven RPG that has four main characters to start with, but you can play one to four. The game plays the same one to four, I think. I don't think there's any rule changes for that. And the players are all embarking on this journey that's set kind of, I, I think, in Earth with mostly human characters. And it's this Western-style setting with this... Like one rich family and their friends going through all these journeys. So the main driving mechanics are there's dice. You roll the dice and that determines a lot of the outcomes in the game. There's a skill tree for everybody to build off of with different faction sectors to build from. It's an RPG, obviously. And there's a shared loot system, which I think was important to highlight because that's not common across all of these. Where you have one pool of money and... Everybody has to use that money collectively. This game contains two different game modes. There's a campaign and a crawl. The crawl is like a tutorial. It has five different scenarios, one from each of the five different chapters that kind of gets your feet wet and shows you what the game could be and also gets you used to the mechanics, gets you used to the way that the game plays, the pacing, and what you should expect to encounter during these encounters in the campaign mode it's also squares this one was squares right that's the that was the weird thing the grid is squares it's With not Madara? yeah Madara not and hexagons. Death monster were both squares yeah it's not hexagons it's squares and Fusion. yes <laughs> and it's minis on a board dudes on a board like a normal you would expect from an rpg in the campaign mode you're creating your own character from scratch you literally start with nothing except base stats maybe an item i don't think you do though and then you go through this like mini tutorial at the beginning it's like i forget what they call it like an academy yeah. or something that is how you determine your acumen which i think they did that wrong i think they should have done it like in the reverse order they shouldn't have rewarded you for being good at that i think because if you're good at that then that means that you're going to be good at the game so i think they should have actually punished you for being huh. good or found a way to punish you for being good so that it makes it levels a playing field. Interesting thing with Madara too is that yes, the characters are different, but they kind of pigeonhole you into certain builds with the stats, base stats of each character. So it's not really choose your own adventure because you're like pigeonholed into the archetype kind of based on the characters. Yeah, but you're not pigeonholed into like range versus melee. You are kind of pigeonholed into like magic versus attacking, though. Well, kind of. Yeah, I mean, a little bit, because like, I think the biggest thing there actually wasn't the stats, but more like the talent that they have, like the basic action mm -hmm. talent or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. hard-coded in, and like it 
think to this maybe a lot. another way to that look at true. it instead of thinking about it as, a, as in pigeonholing you into a certain role. I think certain characters are just better suited for certain builds. Like if you want to do an archery build, it's like okay, who's best in archery build? And you can choose like you know whoever is that. Like that's another way you can look at it. It's just I don't think it's like a negative. I just think there are certain attributes yeah. that are more conducive. I mean, it's it's it's, it's yeah. thematic, right? Madara is highly thematic, and that's kind of what they're based oh, yeah. off of, right? Like you're not gonna have a pro basketball player who's like four feet tall, for example, right? right. It's just how the world works, right? And that's kind of the theme of that world is that you know these people have characters like it's literally madara is like a book that you can like literally mm-hmm. play it's like a story that you partake in and you play and it unravels based on your decisions so it's like this game has so adventure. much story so much story that they made an abridged version of their story that's also extremely long yeah like i think yeah, the abridged so. version yeah. was also like 50 pages and yeah so the story was like 250 pages or something yeah. crazy i did read I did I, I, well not read. I did listen to their official sort of like tutorial videos, and they did say that you know the the big offer for the board game is that story. So they're looking for people who sure. who want mm-hmm. that story. You know, it's like you know if, if 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 that's what you want, then this game is certainly for you. But if you don't want this story, then it's going to be a little rough, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy, heavy story driven. Probably more than any of the other games we're going to talk about. Oh, easily, easily. All right, let's, before we get to too much comparing and contrasting, let's go to the next game. Kingdom Death Monster. Kingdom Death Monster was published in 2015, designed by Adam Poots, and it's also a tabletop RPG, fully cooperative, one to four player, though I think, similar to Madara, it literally doesn't matter how many players there are, because you can control different players. Like, for us, we play with three people, and so basically we had our own characters that we kind of controlled, and then also shared kind of control of the fourth character, because how Kingdom Death Monsters work is you start as a group of survivors with just four of you in like a desolate, hostile, super hostile environment, and Kingdom Death Monster is kind of like, there's permadeath, so you don't, can't get too attached to your characters because they will die, the environment is very punishing, and similar to Madara, it's square movement, there's miniatures on the table, the human characters are one square and some of the monsters are bigger like three by three or some of them i think even bigger than that the main combat in kingdom death monster is dice based so you have d10s and there's like attack and defense and there's obviously complicated rules around combat and stuff but the main combat is driven by dice and stats that modify the, your roles so it's like pretty typical where you have like oh you're attacking with your strength you roll a d10 and then you add your strength stat and so on and so forth and there's also, I think for me, a lot of vibes with Monster Hunter, where there is a campaign and there is like a set timeline, but in order for you to kind of progress, you are killing these different monster types over and over again to get like pieces from the monster to build armor and gear. And the interesting thing about Kingdom Death Monster is that each monster has different difficulties. There's like a one, two, and three. And the level 1 monster is obviously the easiest version, and the level 2 monster is harder, and so on and so forth. And I think what Kingdom Death Monster had that was interesting was that the monster's action deck was also its HP. So like, as you killed the monster, and you saw what cards you got moved out of the deck for damage, it actually gave you more information like, okay, we've got this really dangerous attack out of the deck, so we can kind of stop playing around it. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But I kind of similar along to those levels as well. Because there's like a ticking clock in Kingdom Death Monster, you kind of want to be playing at like the cusp of the difficulty where it's like almost too hard for you to win. Because if you don't scale up fast enough, then you're going to run out of time in the age or whatever of the campaign. And you're just going to fall behind and just die. So I think it was interesting in that sense. But it was definitely very, very, very punishing all of the special events were all negative. <laughs> I think there was, like, no positive events that happened, like, between the, the games. It's like, oh, you found, like, a seed. Oh, the seed just, like, fucking <laughs> crippled one of your dudes, so he can't participate in the next hunt. Good luck. Uh, or, like, ha- acid rain. Half your stored materials are yeah. heated into the garbage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, it was definitely a very punishing environment. Mm. Very desolate. 
Yeah, it's hilarious when you read the card and it's like, oh, I hope I roll a 10 so I yeah. get the outcome of no effect. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this game was, I, I described this as like not losing. Like at no point really do you feel like you're winning. You're just trying to mitigate the damage. I, I certainly hear what you guys are talking about, but like there was definitely like a we're winning vibe I got to it too. Like when, like our main character, Aira, and how we like kitted her out yeah. like to crit the shit out of everything and just get a bunch of resources and just like cripple monsters. Like there were moments where we kind of just like steamrolled and then moments where we were just like, this is mm -hmm. god awful. Like this is desperate. <laughs> That was like Aira V3, right? Because yeah, she, she like, like rolled the nuts. She like reborn yeah, like, we, like a million we times. We sacked yeah. the shit out of her and then we almost lost her. Maybe we talk about this later, but we almost lost her because yeah. of that, the knight. Whatever the thing is, the knight with the big ass halberd, whatever his event was, and she's going to turn into a knight. And then Dave and I like took her yeah. into the mines or something. Oh, right. We're, like, we, like, the mines we, like, to give her armor the or perfect some shit. rolls to get yeah, her like this yeah. stone skin shit so she can take off the armor. It was a fucking amazing. <laughs> and then she, yeah. There's like big wins in that as well. But like it's, it's definitely in like this very. And you know what? The wins feel so much better because of how desperate the rest of the game is, I think. That's exactly what Dave yeah, said. You have yeah. to take chances and play on the edge. If you're playing yeah. safe, when you, you're when not. When you come out, win. yeah, absolutely. You're not going to get that winning feeling. I think, yeah, I think it was actually kind of funny because I remember at the end of when we were playing and we finished, I was like, I enjoyed that, <laughs> but I would never play again. And actually, as I was like going through the rules and like tabletop simulator to look at it, I was like, oh, it, I remember this. This I was actually was. kind of fun. I, it was fun. So I like, guess it's, it's, it's interesting. I very clearly remember when we finished, I was like, that was fun. But yeah. I don't know that I'd play again. But now, like, now like a back. year, I, yeah. looking back at the game and stuff is like, okay, yeah, I actually Yeah, I'm actually play right again. there with you. Like, while we were playing, it was fun. But when it was done, I was like, okay, this was fun, but, like, I'm done. But, like, thinking back, it was like, man, that was, like, not mm -hmm. I'm, like, out of it. Like, that was there was some really good, like, moments. There was, like, really good moments in that game. Yeah, definitely memories there. And I think what's interesting, too, is because you don't have much time to, like, fight stuff, we only really built out a couple armor sets, right? So I wonder what the other armor sets and how they play and, like, the other builds, right? Because we had, like, mm -hmm. Gorm or something. We built a Gorm set with no, the no, no, big clubs. The Gorm to, like, we had the antelope shit. set, I think, because, remember, you would, like, charge at stuff and, like, that was one thing. And then oh, we okay. had yeah, 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 one yeah. of the sickest mm -hmm. sets we had was the fucking Dung Beetle set. That was fucking sick. That Dung Beetle. Yeah, that one was nuts. You could roll away from it. What else did we have? We had another... So I think we had, like, a, mish, a mishmash of stuff. I think it might have just been yeah, like, like leather. I think we had like a generic, like generic leather generic set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal armor or something like that. Yeah. We never did like the end game maps either. There's like, you know, the fourth level oh, yeah. of bosses too. Right, like the, the elder yeah. level or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, didn't we, didn't, we, didn't we do the, the white lion? Maybe yeah, we did the, the cat. Yeah, the, I, think I, we know, did. I don't want to do the donkey, I, I was like, fuck that, dude. That's literally the heart. Literally, <laughs> like, literally confirmed the hardest possible thing to do the entire game. But I was like, let's do it. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I was like, get the fuck Oh, right. Didn't like, we have, no. didn't we, didn't we have like, like, a special character set aside for that? He, like, made his friend yeah, or whatever, and he yeah, had to yeah, bring yeah. him to fight the, yeah. the strongest yeah, battle. That the, yeah, that was the hard part. Yeah. We had to, like, collect stuff along the way to make it even easier, too. Like, he had special abilities that would, like, chunk it for three damage or whatever at a time. Are we supposed to go this deep into this game right now, or are we supposed to go through all three of the games and then come back to them? <laughs> Let's go to Gloomhaven. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for progressing. <laughs> all right. guess, Raphael. Who's the Let's host? Just... What the hell? <laughs> Inter... <laughs> Let's introduce the last game, and then we can get in, right. into this. All right, Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress in 2017. And Gloomhaven, I think generally from what I've seen, is one of the biggest well-received like slam hit hobby board games that's ever been released it's a massive campaign style tabletop rpg with elements of deck building and dungeon crawling and your decisions matter and determine how the story goes and co-op well mostly co-op with some very minor elements of competition but it's, this is a huge awesome game you're basically a group of mercenaries or adventurers just tackling jobs together and going on adventures you're fighting monsters getting rewards leveling up unlocking content which takes the game deeper and also opens it up gives you a bunch of different options i would say this game probably counts as high fantasy set in the medieval world and there's magic and a wide variety of races and demons and summons and mm -hmm. you know all, all of that 
all of that deep magical stuff. Great contrast point between this game and the other two games. Gloomhaven is actually hex based instead of square based, and it does use miniatures. Very deep battle system, lots of strategy. Each player gets to control their own chosen character. I think the game gives you six characters to choose from in the beginning. So everyone chooses one character, and the game scales very well between mm -hmm. two to four players, I think. It's kind of set up to handle that, so you can you don't have to have like a communal character like we did. We had communal characters actually both from Endar and Kingdom Death Monster, but with Gloomhaven we can just choose three or scale up to four if we had a fourth person. Each person gets their own character, and each character plays differently, has their own customizable deck, and you can take your character in with their customizable deck of abilities, and you can also give them equipment and perks to augment what they can do. The monsters are also controlled by cards, so there's no, if I remember correctly, there's no dice in this game. It's all, it's basically all cards, yeah. No dice. The monsters are, are also controlled by their own deck of cards, and the game is turn-based. One player goes, and then a monster might go, and another player might go, but the turn order is completely determined based on the an initiative system. So when you play cards, cards have a certain number on them, and then the monster cards also have a certain number on them, and then you kind of arrange each of your cards by increasing order of number, and that determines the turn order. There's also lots more elements to battle. There's You can release like an earth element or a wind element or a fire element, and then use those elements to augment the effects of your cards, or even the monsters might grab an element and augment their effects. There's a battle modification deck, so when you hit something, you can luck into a crit and hit the twice damage, or you can actually just completely whiff and there's looting, there's just, there's so much going on in this game. And it's just like in any sort of RPG, there's an XP system. So that's one form of, I guess, kind of currency in the game where every battle gives you XP and you can use your XP to level your characters up and unlock new abilities. And every time you unlock a new ability, you actually get to choose between two abilities that are at your current level, or you can go back and unlock some new ability that you had missed before. But there's always choices, always different branches you can go into kind of customize your own character. Then there's also a, a gold system where you can get gold as you loot in each scenario or get gold as a reward in each scenario. You can use that to purchase more equipment or even modify the cards in your deck to make them stronger, which is pretty sick. You can get some pretty broken cards by doing that. Each scenario also gives you personal goals and these personal goals give you access to another currency system, which is perks. You basically get like these check marks, which you can use to unlock new perks, which gives your character some more buffs. And then there's longer term goals, which you complete over a number of scenarios, maybe like through a fifth of the of the campaign or something. And when you complete this longer term goal, you can actually unlock a whole new character. So the game starts you with like six characters you can choose from. And I think there's maybe like 20 total you can choose from, which all play differently, all have their own customizable decks, which they all use their own different blend of mechanics. It's very cool. Yeah, and then there's, so there's a main story you can follow where your decisions kind of choose what path you go down, what different areas you unlock and how scenarios unfold. But there's also side quests built in. Like when you travel between the town of Gloomhaven and wherever you end up going in the world, you run into all these different events, which might buff your team, debuff your team give you an item or unlock a whole new line of side quests. There's just so much different stuff to explore. And it's like Gloomhaven is easily one of my favorite games that I've ever played in my entire life. Me too. Going into it, I wasn't sure. I didn't know if this was going to be for me. I like had avoided D&D &D to this point. I really didn't know if this like type of storytelling game was really something I really wanted to play. Yeah. And then we played Gloomhaven. I mean, I, am, I personally am a... This huge it. sucker for deck like i all i do in my spare time is play deck builders like slate aspire rogue book like all i, I love deck builders and mm -hmm. like gloomhaven is just like mm -hmm. is just perfect for me <laughs> i mean i think the interesting thing about gloomhaven is that there is no dice but there still is a good like source of randomness i mean mm -hmm. you guys know me i i hate i hate dice <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, some guys you guys suck at me playing each game <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They don't feel no, like think, dice when you don't roll them, Dave. I think when you the hit the R button. Too, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> with Gloomhaven too, is it's interesting because the combat system itself, like, is like the, the card has two halves, right? You choose a top and a bottom. That mm -hmm. also makes it interesting because, like, sometimes you put two cards down and then the cards flip. You're like, oh, yep. I guess I'm not doing what I thought I was doing because that's not how yeah. the yeah, yeah it's it, you know, it the is cards flipped. 
it is so cool like having to especially with a later you, initiative you, just like you said dave like you, you you have a plan and you can't really i mean the, the game encourages you to share some information but not too much you, you can't straight up tell your team what it is that you're doing specifically you can't tell them like what cards you have you can say generally oh i'm gonna probably go over there and try to attack that monster you can say like that but you can't tell them exactly what effects you're going to use or anything like that. They discourage doing that. And it's way better to not do that because yeah, you can't use numbers. Of, like, that's a big thing, too. You, you know, because everyone flips their cards and you're like, oh, right. that's what you're doing. And then you might have to adjust your strategy. And then the monster might do something that you did not expect entirely. You might throw your whole strategy mm -hmm. off. And then you have you might have to readjust to yeah. that in that moment. And I think that's a really, really cool aspect of the game. Yeah, I mean, like, going, if you compare all three games like that, like, Gloomhaven has initiative mm -hmm. track where there's, you have control because you're like, if I want to go fast, I'm going to look at my hand, I'm going to put a fast card down. Madara, literally random every time. Yeah. And Kingdom Death Monster, I don't remember. Was it always you act, monster, monster act, goes you first. ask? Yeah. And so you monster can, always you goes as your first. party, monster yeah. always goes first, and then you as a party, you can decide what order your, your party acts in, right? Yep. So I think that was fine, too, because what the monster does is random, so that influences what you're going to do. So I think of the three systems, I would say... Gloomhaven's was the best. Madara's yeah. was the worst in terms of deciding the turn order. Yeah. Well, Madara's wasn't really a system. I mean, it was just completely. It was random. Just literally, yeah. It was that. I thought that was really dumb. It's like. Yeah. Sometimes no if, like, yeah, you just the monster ends its turn and then immediately gets to go again. And someone's just screwed because the dice rolled wrong. You, you can't control anything. Mm -hmm. It's just like, well, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, we did yeah, have those exactly. items. Right? You could, you could have items. Where you could move someone to the front yeah. or move someone to the back, and like that's a little bit of influence. They're consumable. But yeah, they're consumable. So they're one-time use. Yeah, but then you have the item that lets you choose a yeah. consumable, so you get them every single time. It's true. That's a very inelegant solution to introducing randomness to your game. By I, just, just, I also love just how just how round. you could do like correct. You just had in Gloomhaven, you just have access to all of your abilities. It's a deck builder, but you're not necessarily drawing cards. You have all of your abilities in your hand from the very beginning, and you can do whatever you want. You can you mm -hmm. can choose to apply your abilities in whatever order you would like. I think that's that's really cool to just have that sort of just just have it wide open for you to kind of just do whatever you want. The other really thing cool thing about Gloomhaven too is the resting mechanic. That's a really cool mechanic. Yeah. But also the like loss mechanic that you just yeah, literally yeah, yeah. are like, you know what, this turn I'm gonna fucking go all out and just like yeah. get so much closer to it. And it's like a cool thematic thing too, right? You're, you're getting closer to exhaustion. You're like exerting yourself extra. Yeah, it's almost like a built-in to do this one special thing. Yeah, it's like a it's like a. And I think that that's a really cool system. thing. You know, like how yeah, that like a, like almost like a built-in overdrive system right. almost. That's yeah. That yeah, that is really cool. You don't really have that in. I don't think you really have that in Kingdom Death Monster or Madara. That sort of let's fucking go like balls to the wall right now sort of thing. Well, in in Kingdom Death Monster, you could like yeah throw the founding stone and like right you start. That's like, discard true, but it's not. It's not. I think it's maybe not, Founding Stone is like maybe the only one. <laughs> the same. Madara, the only thing is like you could basically take a turn off and then get a yeah. better second turn because you're it's, it's points not yeah. accumulate. It's not as satisfying. Yeah, you get three per turn. Like, you remember, like in five, Haven, but it's not the, the same like thing. Like the Berserker, as, I think right, it was yeah. that had like all. I mean, this might this is a spoiler as a character you can unlock, I guess. But in Gloomhaven, you had the Berserker that had like the axes. And then there's one but, last where you just like throw a bunch of axes. You just like fuck up the entire yeah. room of monsters. I don't know if you guys remember that. And then you buff him yeah. so you like all <laughs> yeah. those axes do like a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Like that is awesome. You just go to me and you just drop a, a fuck ton of damage on, <laughs> on all the monsters in there. Yeah, I think it was like printed one or two maybe. But then you had yeah, the, just, the robe that on, like you do three damage yourself. And you add one attack. And then like I think you put, yeah, you put the power potion. And then the, you might have even enhanced it. It was... A crazy attack. I mean, there's a reason, right? Gloomhaven has been number one in Borking Geek for like a long time. Years, yeah. Because it's very well designed, it's very elegant, it's like simple but complex, and it strikes that balance really well of simplicity and complexity. Mm -hmm. I feel like for both Kingdom Death Monster and Madara, the combat systems are so complex yeah. in ways that you're like, I wish this was like a video game, so it would do all this thinking for me. Yeah, it's less approachable for sure. I think. I think Gloomhaven's system yeah. is very approachable. Yeah. But it does have its own intricacies it's, too it's, that do. It's kind definitely of very complex, but people. I feel like it's it's less complex in a way compared to King Death Monster and like Midar, right? Where there's like layers upon layers and like the actions mm -hmm. and the losses and the dice and the stats and things and like mm -hmm. granted we we play Kingdom Death Monster on tabletop simulator, so a lot of those tools mm -hmm. are already built in. I think same with Gloomhaven as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
I remember there was lots of times in combat systems for like either King of Death Monster or like Madara. You're like, oh, I forget. So I feel like definitely for Madara, maybe because we didn't play as much and because the rules were pretty complicated. Mm-hmm. It felt like when yeah, we were playing, that's true. That's as- one that's of us had true. rule book up. On yeah, no, you're right. Looking up stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't really have that much of a Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, I think Madara had the most complex rules in that sense because mm-hmm. there were so many systems that don't show up every time. So as you play, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, wait, I remember reading about this in the rule like three months ago. Let's open the rule book it's again. Whereas, Because like, they tried to be succinct and each person had like a fucking like keyword that yeah. actually meant yeah. something for an ability. And you had to go look up that keyword every time because yeah. mo- different monsters, different keywords, and it was annoying as fuck. Because I feel like that's probably why we stopped playing Mandara. We didn't finish Mandara, and I think it's because every time we played, we couldn't just pick up and play. We had to like read, read the rulebook. Whereas for like Gloomhaven and Kingdom of the Monster, you play one combat and like you play one scenario or one like hunt, you kind of understand the flow of how the game is going to go. And like, sure, the gameplay is different, but like the core loop is the same. Whereas with Mandara, I felt like it was different every time because they're introducing different keywords or there's like a new map layout that introduces elevation Mm -hmm. or something or like Mm -hmm. obstacles that you don't see before where it felt like it's too complex madara in a lot of ways where it feels like Mm -hmm. it's trying to be a video game but a board game but you lose a lot of the quality of life i guess from it having being a video game where it's Mm -hmm. like inventory management and stuff like that i in my head i was like, when you would always say that Madara is the most complex, and I would always be like, you know what? I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like Gloomhaven is the most complex one. But what, when you just said that, that, like, every game we played with Madara, we have to have the rulebook open, that's when I realized, you, you know what, Dave is right. Because with Gloomhaven, every now and again, we would have to go back to the rulebook, especially when we try to figure out what a monster should do. Um, and that was, actually, I would say Gloomhaven had the most complex monster yeah. system, because I think we had the most trouble with figuring out what the monsters would do. But in general, I think Gloomhaven... Probably was the yes. most is the most elegant, and literally because of what you just said, where Madara we always have to go back to the rulebook every game, but Gloomhaven we can make it through a couple of sessions without having to reference rules. And I think that like, Kingdom Death Monsters probably was definitely like in the middle there in, in terms of the rules. Yeah, I think the other two games had like the fudge factor, right? Like Kingdom Death Monster was like mm, right, if right, right. the rules and whatever don't exist, and do whatever's worse for the players. Yes. And then Madara was yeah. kind of the <laughs> other way. It was like if the rules don't exist, then just do whatever's whatever you want. But yeah. Gloomhaven player's was choice, like, that's true. Yeah, Madara was, was like, like, no, there is one solution. Like, you have to find the one solution, yeah. period. And I would say there's no, that, and, there's no and leeway, there's no the fudge kind of factor there. Continuing with what Dave was saying, there is, there is like a, a balance of like, because these are all very complex games. Like, even if we're trying to rank which one is more complex, these are all very complex games. And mm-hmm. no, like, like, an, like an average, you know, like sellers, sellers of Catan player will probably have difficulty if they just stepped into one of these games just like completely fresh without any sort of experience with something like this. So these are all quite complex games. There is like a balance between right. how complex something can be and how much fun there is to derive from it. And I think Madara has like a high complexity and kind of lower fun factor going going on for it. But Gloomhaven has like a lower complexity, like higher fun balance going on, which I think is one of the reasons why it like comes out on top in these three, these, these three games. I mean, let's look at the the Bible of complexity here of Board Game Geek. <laughs> Gloomhaven 3.89. Oh, wow, Kingdom Death Monster is more complicated than Madara is what they're saying. 4.26. Hmm. I would probably agree because of all like the armor pieces and how loot is dealt out, but I think in terms yeah. of like the main combat gameplay, I would say King, if Kingdom mm-hmm. Death Monster is easier you know to understand yeah. than Madara. Yeah. I think it's the easiest. I think there wasn't really too much. There, like, the yeah. monsters don't really have abilities. If they did, they were clearly spelled out on the card. Yeah, you know, it wasn't. You weren't really like referencing or looking back or anything like that. It was very clear. Yeah, okay, yeah, this yeah. person attacks in a cone. Okay, this person when they get attacked, they fucking run away. All right, I get all those things. Like yeah. they're all because the each monster had like ability. You know cards. what? You know what probably yeah. really causes what that, that, what that, that um, complexity of spike in Kingdom F monster? It's the village. What do you call it? Wherever you go, and you have so many different. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, you can like add between, so many different things. You yep. can, how do I spend oh, yep. all my yeah. points? Yeah, like, exactly. Who do I? Yep. Who do we take? Who do we kid out? Who do we have? How do we? Do we have yep. kids this time? Do we like? It's it's just so much yep. ma- like resource yep. management. Is that's yes. probably where the yeah, I think that's Frosthaven's going right. to bring some of that to Gloomhaven, but Gloomhaven there's literally almost nothing. Like between scenarios, you're pretty much doing nothing. Yeah, you're just, in Madara, you're, you're it's, it's up, in yeah. between. 
Yeah. Midara, you have the kidding, but that's pretty much it. And it's only in between certain scenarios. It's not every time. Mm-hmm. So the Kingdom of the Monster is definitely the most intense in that in that perspective of the yeah. like the time you spend playing versus the time you spend kidding is pretty much equal. Yeah, I mean, I think that that that's part of the appeal of Kingdom of the Monster, right? Where like, right. you feel like you actually have a full ownership of what your characters do and like how you want to build your characters and like what gear you want to go for. But it's also like mm-hmm. obviously you want to pull your resources and make one person strong. And like, mm-hmm. I think there are definitely for King Death Monster because of Permadeath. I think we literally brought like people who are supposed to die. <laughs> <on months. Yep. laughs> like yeah, just your job, people. Yeah, your job is to die. Yeah, so yeah. Hits. yeah. Absorb the hits from our, our <laughs> yeah, King Death Monster. You weren't you weren't supposed up. to get attached to people, but we definitely got attached to like like three yeah. or four people for sure. Like we were like these these are our babies. We're gonna do everything we can. To buff the fuck out of these these people and protect them like at all at all costs. <laughs> it's true, but it's also interesting in the fact that if you do that right, they age faster and they retire. Yeah. Right? So like I think our main character, she was one or two hunts away from retirement, and then we like rebirth rebirth her right, which is how we were able to bring her. To yeah, some, some, yeah, we did mm-hmm. we did all sorts of wild like <laughs> meta shit to mm-hmm. to keep to keep people alive or to keep using people. For sure. But one thing I will say, I, I think, Dave, you mentioned the armor system, maybe, or I can't remember with Dave or Adam. But I actually, I actually really liked the armor system in Madara. I actually really liked, that gave me a lot of sense of satisfaction. So, like, we should probably, like, talk about what that is. So, like... Just the gear yeah. in general? So, this, so, in Kingdom Death Monster, every character has this 9x9 nine nine grid. And within that 9x9 nine nine grid is where you place all of your equipment. So, that can be your armor, your weapons, potion you might have, like or a little, like, like a founding stone, which is, like, this slab of stone you can throw that auto crits a monster like you put everything in that grid and a lot of these items they fit like puzzle pieces and if, if you fit them in the right orientation or the right configuration with another item that matches up to them it unlocks like an additional ability on that card so that was really cool yeah. like trying to arrange everything and like trying to figure out like what what buffs were best for this particular scenario or how can i optimize getting all the buffs out of these things that was that was really cool i actually really liked that a lot yeah, best I would agree. Gear system, I think. Sure. Yeah, definitely had the best gear system where it's like intricate, but at the same time, it's not complex where you dislike it. Whereas I feel like that's how some of the systems were in Madara. You're like, this is complexity for complexity's sake. And I don't you're like right. It. Yeah, Madara did feel like complexity mm-hmm. for complexity's sake. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, and then it made the off hunt part fun too, right? Because you're spending time, enjoying your time solving yeah. a puzzle. How do I put all these pieces together to make it like the most? Yeah, exactly. For my what character? weapon should I get to go with this armor? Like, how, yeah, absolutely. Or how can I mix and match these armor pieces? Yeah, yeah. Like, what can I use while building up to this next piece that still like activates this set piece or whatever? And like, what random piece of crap that's really cheap can I bring to optimize these pieces and these puzzle pieces and stuff like that? So I think it was like mm-hmm. an, a nice puzzle to solve, like a, a fun little mini game that is not exactly combat related that is still yeah. entertaining I, I would say and i would also say kingdom death monster is probably the most choose your adventure out of all of these games because you literally get yep. to like you were like okay mm-hmm. i want to unlock this armor set or i want to get the resources to buy i don't know what they're like shops basically or or whatever mm-hmm. it was like there was there was research from between the ages i think and then you can spend yeah. resources and then you can spend resources like because you once per age or whatever, or once per year is what the the, the, the spacing was on uh, the monster. You can, like, you, you discover three resources yeah, that you okay. pick one. There we go, yeah. Debate. But, like, but yeah, exactly. So, like, mm-hmm. you have all these things you can do while you're in the village or whatever. And that kind of determines, or you get to use that information to decide, okay, what do we want to hunt this year? What do we, go, what do we want to go fight so that we can get certain resources to progress our village in the way that we want to get access to this other cool stuff that we really yep. want. Like that was like it was kind of wide open and we could do like whatever we wanted. Obviously un- until like a- we hit certain thresholds and we'd have to fight like a crazy boss or some shit and get our and get our shit rocked. But like <laughs> but up to that point we could do- we could just do whatever and that-, and that was really cool to experience that. Yeah, this was the only game of the three that I actually like made a spreadsheet for because of that. Try to figure out which ones uh, to go on and to get to yield the hide or the bone yeah, or whatever yeah. the most. Because it is so important to make sure that you get the best chance of getting specific types of material to do right, like what yeah. you're saying. To open the different shops or to make the different weapons that you yeah. need. Yep. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was interesting in that way too because like I think we definitely had the most discussions on what to do 
without resources in Kingdom Death Monster, whereas in everything else, it's like, whatever. Mm-hmm. It just happens. You don't yeah, have to, like, think is about the, probably the most gear. lackluster, right? For all the accolades that Gloomhaven has, this it doesn't need it, though, right? Like, Gloomhaven didn't need to have an intricate gear system or anything like that. No, Gloomhaven that's the thing, right? Just it exists. It strikes that fine. balance. It strikes that balance yeah. perfectly. And also, the, the other big differential between Gloomhaven and Kingdom Death Monster is that Kingdom Death Monster is very much communal. Like, we kind of made a lot of those decisions yeah. together. Obviously, we, we kind of each yep. claimed a character in some way and kind of made most of the decisions, but we mm-hmm. together we discussed like what we would do with the resources. But in Gloomhaven, even though it's cooperative, you all own your own resources, you all own your own characters. So it's really up yeah. to you how yep. you want it, what direction you want to take that character. Yeah. You got full control over that. Uh, I think if you look at like how much we played each game, we played Gloomhaven, like the main campaign, like three, maybe <laughs> even four times, right? <laughs> King of Death Monster we played, ones that he made. Yeah. We played once through in King of Death Monster. Well, King of Death, we well, didn't finish. I, let me, uh, let me, I walked that back. King of Death Monster, we died. And then we played again. And then we started over again. We did die after yeah. 10. Oh, we died. We yeah. And then we, we started yeah. from the beginning again. Okay. In like year that, 10, yeah. we started That's over. how hard King of Death Monster okay. <laughs> Like, we got... We... Oh, but actually, isn't there literally a, in the rule book, like, if this is your second settlement or whatever... Add this yeah. to the starting board. I think we did. Like get, I remember. Yeah, it should make it a little easier. But, like, but we, but yeah, like, I think we would have still made it through without that boon. I think we learned so much, like, and we, we like mm-hmm. gained so much from the first playthrough. The second playthrough really was not nearly as punishing as the first one was. I, I, well, I think the other thing too is for, the sec- for our final playthrough where we won. If we didn't do the thing where we stacked that one character with like the million rebirths, we would not yeah, have beaten well, the final boss. Yeah, I, probably. Yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah. <laughs> we were not strong enough without that one character oh, man. being we juiced to the teeth. So hard on. We lead so hard on her. <laughs> because well, well, I think what was it? Every time she crit, the monster did a basic action instead of drawing like a special one from the deck, right? Something like that. Yes. Something, something yeah, stupid yeah. like that. And that when yeah. when you can control what the monster is doing every round because you can crit on like a two. Or something. Yeah. It's no, like yeah. very powerful. And that that kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier. Like Kingdom Death Monster is a very strong element of how do we not lose? <laughs> how do we? It's, it's just oh, like absolutely. how do we? Yeah. How do it's we mitigating. mitigate the? Yeah. How do we mitigate the shit show that we're about to, <laughs> about to witness? Like, <laughs> I don't know, which is very stimulating in its own way. Go ahead. So this kind of ties into the next topic I want to bring up: the new player experience. You talked about it in Kingdom Death Monster, where if you fail, you can try again with a little bit of a boon. Gloomhaven kind of had to make its own game, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, to kind of get people to do a basically tutorial run in order to teach you how to play Gloomhaven. I, Gloomhaven, I think, did a very poor job. Considering it's number one, I think it did a very poor job mm. of the new player experience. And then yes. just finally to wrap it up, Midara has the, the different crawl version of the game, basically where you walk through each of the five chapters and you play one pseudo scenario from that chapter geared up like you would be at that point in the game to kind of feel your way through the game which i think actually is the best of the three so what do you what do you guys think about the new player experiences i mean i think the new player experience wise gloomhaven we were a little bit i guess lucky in the sense that Raphael had learned how to play the game before we started playing together Mm -hmm. so like we watched like two hours or three hours of videos before we first played so we kind of understood the basics then Raphael, i think but Raphael was already there though with gloomhaven that he knew Okay, like this is what the status does. This is what this means. So, like he put in the time, or he, he had already put in the time, so he knew the rules. And I think when you have that one player who knows the rules already, it makes life a lot easier. Whereas for both mm-hmm. Kingdom Death Monster and Madara, we didn't have that. I think there was a little more difficulty of of getting up to speed in terms of those games. I will say too that Gloomhaven was the one, like of the three, if there was one to have a person who knew what they were doing it'd be gloomhaven because it's such a complex ai system can you yep. imagine if we spent like three hours the first time playing scenarios figuring out what the fuck the monsters were gonna do like that would yeah. have definitely detracted from our experience and we might not even have gotten to the point where we did we played so much gloomhaven because that is there's so much ai complexity there yep. that like you said a computer game would handle on its own but where you're playing on a tabletop you have to figure it out together yeah they did actually make a digital version of gloomhaven which it does this very well. Like, this is the thing that I wanted it to solve, and it solved that. Like, we played it on Tabletop Simulator, and it automated a lot of things, but we still, even at our peak, probably only got down to two hours at our fastest, maybe a little bit faster than that for a scenario. I can play with people who have less experience with board games in, like, an hour and a half on the digital. It's insane. 
Yeah, I mean, I would say I have friends who played Gloomhaven, and I mean, I've played Gloomhaven on and like actual physical pieces, and I have even when you played Gloomhaven like physically with the actual board, like mm-hmm. there's like a million companion apps and websites mm-hmm. to make it easier, and like I played Jaws with my wife, and like that experience is very nice for like a new player. Like it eases you into the game, and like it's like a very good tutorial system. Where I feel like the base room haven is just throws you right in and that first scenario is not exactly easy either for somebody who's like just playing the game for the very first time can easily lose that first scenario yeah like i think i have a friend who played gloomhaven and like they missed like one key thing about scaling when they played so like they're as you level up the game's supposed to get harder they missed that Mm -hmm. so like wait why is this (laughs) so easy like why are like (laughs) monsters just like dying in like one hit or something like this doesn't seem right and it's because they miss like the importance yeah. of like the scaling of mm-hmm. of Gloomhaven, where it scales yeah. to your party level. Mm-hmm. So like, it, I have a, an anecdote of someone, a new player, who made a, a, like a critical mistake, and basically they had to start over. And so it was like not it's not it's not fun when you have to like start over because you missed a rule. Yeah, especially when you progress so far, probably, you know, like. Yeah, and they were like playing in person too, so it's like a lot harder to organize everyone to come together and like, mm-hmm. oh wait, we mm-hmm. messed up, and now those like ten hours to spend are gone. Yeah, because the game has so much progression embedded into it that you can't really just like. I mean, I guess you could just next scenario fix it, but it's, it would be a stark change in the experience. That's for sure. <laughs> So speaking of experience, I guess our experience as three players, I think we kind of touched upon this a little bit. The Gloomhaven experience, obviously, there it scales based on the number of players that you have and the level that you are. But the Midara and the Kingdom of Death Monster experience, they scale... Well, Kingdom of Death Monsters, I guess, is based on how you roll, <laughs> is how it scales, based on if you get boons or if you get a bunch of pitfalls. But Midara, it kind of scales linearly, I guess. And in both Midara and Kingdom of Death Monster, you're forced to bring four players to each combat so we had to like we talked about we had to each communally play the fourth player and discuss how we're going to do that and kingdom death monster and madara also had the split loot systems so kingdom death monster and madara the difficulty did increase over time sort of because i think gloomhaven scaled completely based on the players levels right so if you weren't doing well and weren't leveling right quickly yep. then the monsters the difficulty also did not scale quickly the, the difficulty literally scaled with how well you were doing right. while in madara and kingdom death monster right. it's on a times it's a, based on a time system so you have to try to keep up with the curve for those two well in kingdom death monster you basically have to you have to force the scaling or otherwise, you're going to like fall behind. Yeah, and you're yeah die. Force, force the scaling is in you have with to Midora, force yourself it, to keep up with the difficulty increase. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, yep. Correct. You got to take chances. Yeah. Yeah. Because like every, like year 10 or whatever, the guy comes and he's yeah. not strong enough to just die. Yeah. But with Midora, it was kind of linear scaling. Like it kind of held your hand. It was like, here you go. Yeah. You get one XP every fight. All right. Now you got to spend your XP no, yeah, to get these trees. Yeah, right. Oh, all right. Now we're going to unlock the next level of gear. Here you go. Maybe you should go buy it. Yeah. The monster difficulties increased with your, with your loot level, I think is what it's called. So they, they, yeah, they, yeah. As the the monsters got harder, they also gave you better equipment. But with kingdom death monster, like you have to, yeah, you're right. You have to force all, you have to force access to better equipment. It's not, it's not handed to you. You have to make it happen. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. I think the other thing too, that I didn't really like about Madar in that sense was that the dice were not created equal. Like, as the, the stronger gear you have, they have custom dice that roll, like, different numbers and different values. And I, I, I honestly didn't really like that because I guess I felt, like, hand You're like, okay, mm-hmm. you're at this point in the game, and now we're going to make the monsters harder, so we're going to give you better better gear, and you can literally... And it actually wasn't even... Like, if you look at all the gear, like, between the levels, it wasn't actually much different. It was just the same item, but, like, with better yeah, dice, no, like right. That's one exactly out of that. what it was. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's like, like okay. Only, actually, the dice is like one of the only appeals for me in Midara. Was that there was like this kind of intricate dice system where the dice would upgrade. And I thought that was have a pretty symbols. novel, unique idea. I didn't like the symbols. I mean, I also I already don't really like dice. And when you make dice even more random, this mm-hmm. like, just like, kill me now. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> opposite of sign me up. It's like <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit about combat. Obviously, these games use combat in different ways. It's so funny. Like we say, Gloomhaven, you know, is a really good game. It stands the test of time. And then all of these different things I'm bringing up, these different aspects of the game, Gloomhaven is the outlier. Like Kingdom Death Monster and Midara do a lot of these things very similarly or relatively similarly at their base level. And then Gloomhaven's like yeah. out in left field doing its own fucking thing. And yeah, maybe that's what I makes think, it so good. You know? So I think what it is is that a lot of these board games have their roots in D&D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where it's like D twenty, D ten, or D six, whatever. Like, granted, I've never played much D and D other than literally like Baldur's Gate, which is D and D based system, but right. a video game. That's kind of where my knowledge comes from. But I think Madara and King Earth Monster both have heavy, I guess, roots in D and D with like the D tens and whatever. Mm-hmm. But Madara kind of took it a different way by adding its own special dice, which kind of gives it its own unique flair. Whether you like it or dislike it, uh, it's up to each individual. But I think mm-hmm. that's kind of where you know the differences lie and i feel like gloomhaven developed its own system outside of the D roots and t- mm-hmm. did a good job yeah a really good job that that's a fucking jump you know D D is pretty well established and you can understand like how D uses his mechanics and how to build on top of that especially with dice going a complete different way and doing this card driven thing yeah. was a, a leap and I'm glad he's being yeah, celebrated for it because like, that was nuts. completely card driven. I will chance. say there is there is one big thing that we didn't even talk about this, which is kind of wild actually. But there is one huge difference between Kingdom Death Monster and Madara and Gloomhaven. Kingdom Death Monster, every battle you're fighting a boss monster. Every we I, I can't believe we didn't mention this, but Kingdom Death mm-hmm. Monster, every fight is yeah, a boss okay. fight, <laughs> and it's fucking epic. And the boss it's true. is true. Dis- Gusting and will just dis- will absolutely destroy your character if you don't yeah. play well. And it's it's always it always feels like a fight for your life with Kingdom Death Monster, which is really cool. But mm-hmm. Madara and Gloomhaven are both like pretty traditionally like scenario dungeon crawlers, which scenario is awesome based. in yeah. its own way. But Kingdom Death Monster is very special in in that way. But Madara was also pretty much always kill all the baddies, and Gloomhaven at least had some variability on that, right? Like, there was escort run, missions, run away, and they were, yeah. escort, yeah, kill all the, the yeah. killers, yeah, whatever. I, Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gloomhaven did have some variability, variability for sure. Madara did have a couple missions where you were like rescue yeah. this lady or whatever, like one when you were separated from the pack, whatever. But yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. My memories with Madara, we killed all the baddies every yeah. time. I would say yeah, Kingdom Death accurate. Monster had <laughs> maybe like the most unique base idea, which was like instead of dungeon crawl, you just fight a, bo- a boss monster every time. Like the the base idea was the most unique, mm-hmm. but it didn't mm-hmm. really iterate on that particular concept a lot. Like it was pretty much okay. What's what does this other boss monster do? Like it's always just fight the boss monster. What does this boss monster do? But with mm-hmm. Gloomhaven and Madara, it's you know you have a scenario and you got to kill the baddies, but it's also okay fetch this item, okay, or protect this person, or destroy these pillars, or there's more variability. They iterate more on a traditional idea. Well, Kingdom Death Monster just leans into this mm-hmm. kind of unique idea without really iterating on it very much. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think, and- I think with Kingdom Death Monster, they fill in those gaps with the complexity of, like, the town, right? Like, the right. village. You're building up your village and there's these events and, like, you get nicknames or something random from one of those mm-hmm. events, I remember. And, like, it fills in the complexities missing from combat by giving you more complexity and more choices when you're in your village, just kind of building up your base. No, yeah, ab- yep. Right. Yeah, that's where the variability comes from, and that's where the like intrigue and the game-to-game kind of lure, right, that keeps you coming back for more, that's where that comes from, I think. More, so definitely more so than the other ones, but I think that's really where the... That was the intent, I think, of Kingdom Death Monster, to drive the repeatability based on the campfire side instead of the combat side. There was yeah, also the we hunt know, part I, I too. Was we haven't actually really that, talked about that. But then I didn't bring it up because we were talking about the, the battle, and I was trying to think about more things about the, about the battle. Which battle system do you guys think was the hardest? Or which one do you think we had the hardest time with in terms of like winning, in terms of the, in terms of the battles? I think Gloomhaven. But I think it's more driven because of the how we choose our actions mm-hmm. and how the enemies choose their actions. In Kingdom Death Monster, it was always like you're, you're kind of like, oh shit, what's the monster going to do? Yeah. But then you get to fully react. You know, you haven't pre-planned your turn. And then you have to react yeah. based on your t- what you already pre-planned. You get to fully react to whatever the monster does. And then well, I think Dara is just trash. 
Kingdom Maybe. Death Monsters, that's not necessarily true, right? Because there's a hit location, and, like, there's reactions on whether you hit or fail that change stuff in Kingdom Death Monster. Like, I remember there was, like, the lion where if you hit it, and, like, the hit location is, like, its arm, and you don't hit that arm location, and, like, charges forward and grabs you. Right. So, like, there is some variability in Kingdom Death Monsters. Like, not right. always just you act, monsters act, you act, monsters act. There was, like, some some complexity throw in with the hit location deck and like reactions on something like that yeah right that is true and then there was incentive incentivized you because you had to play so <laughs> friggin greedy that there was like oh if i like roll the one in ten and get a crit then i can you know like if i'm behind it and i get the crit then i can do get the item or whatever also one thing we didn't mention too kingdom death monster is the only one that separates hit chance mm, and damage yeah, chance. that's true because with madara it was just basically like trample you overflow the defense and then gloomhaven it's uh yeah deterministic yeah you get some modifiers well, for damage, except for the mo- you know, except for the modifier damage deck. you damage but actually i would take kingdom death monster one step further there was there was hit damage and crit you actually had three different buckets you could right. land in and they all had different right. sort of implications as to whether you you, you achieve them or not so, yeah. I think that's the core difference with, between Gloomhaven and Kingdom of Death Monster is that Kingdom of Death Monster, like I said, you get to fully react. I like I get what Dave's saying, but then like also like if you miss, then it's like fully reactionary. It's not you did no planning to get to that point. But in Gloomhaven, you did plan to get to that point. It's what you said earlier, Dave. You did some planning and now you have to choose whether you like actually can do that or not based on the what's been given to you, what's been dealt to you. Mm, and I think that's the hardest one to navigate. I mean, Going back to the first question, I would actually say, in like the stupid way, Madara was the hardest because we, every time we were playing, we had the Rubble yeah, Open. So in that yeah. sense, in that sense, it was the hardest because we 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 yeah. never really knew what was happening every time we were playing. Like there was some new interaction. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, Madara's combat was the most like technically complex. But in terms of like difficulty, I would agree that like, Gloomhaven was the okay. was the hardest in terms of like, like actual combat. It's like, I mean, I guess maybe it's not it's not quite hardest, but Gloomhaven, I guess, felt more like a puzzle okay. each turn sometimes, mm-hmm. where there's like, okay, I thought I was going to go first, but this monster is now doing this, like, thing that's canceling out my actions. How do we solve the puzzle with the pieces we have on the board right. to, to come out, come up with the best outcome? Whereas I feel like that's kind of like where the players work together, right? Like, you can, mm-hmm. everyone has the same information on the board when the turn starts, and but there's choice on whether you choose top or bottom or like where you move, where you go, who to kill, like what becomes the party target each round in Gloomhaven, right? So that's kind of like the interesting thing there. Whereas in like Kingdom Death Monster or Madara, for example, like each turn, nothing changes about what you're gonna do that turn, right? Mm-hmm. The, the goal, I guess, maybe sometimes for Kingdom Death Monster, it's like okay, maybe we won't hit the monster this turn because he's, he's doing this thing that'll fuck us up right. if we hit him. Right. Whereas in Madara, it was always like. <laughs> okay, just run forward and hit this thing. Yeah. I guess with, with Madara, <laughs> like sometimes you could miss, and that would be like, okay, now I need someone to come over and kill this monster before it before it gets a chance to attack me and damage me. But no, you're right. The, the Madara was the most, yeah. I think, like straightforward. I'm actually gonna mix it. Like, so Adam basically said Gloomhaven. Dave said in a way Madara, but maybe actually Gloomhaven. I'm actually gonna go in a completely different direction. I'm gonna say I think Kingdom Death Monster was actually the most the most difficult one and hardest one, and because I remember. I remember all of this. We had to do okay. so much planning. It's like, okay, make sure like this guy is over here. So when we when we hit the the lion and it pounces forward, it doesn't like it doesn't grab Aira and like drag her over over there. Or like make make sure yeah, like that's true. Make sure when is the antelope's turn? We're all like not in front of it, so that when it when it does its like stampede or whatever, it doesn't trample anyone. Like there was so much like there's so much like hurting of the monster. And like strategically placing all of our guys and like hitting them from the rear so we get like the, the rear hit advantage and all that stuff. There's like there's just so much like complexity mm-hmm. to how we approach the battles and so much planning that went into every turn. And so, like I can remember so many turns we just sat down like discussing for minutes, like, okay, what do we do here? The thing with Kingdom Death Monsters is that it's all of us planning together in it, it down to the very minutiae of mm-hmm. everything while with gloomhaven everyone gets to do whatever they want we generally communicate okay i need you to generally do this or you should do that or i'm going to do this maybe you should do that but it's very vague and we and we flip cards and we deal with it as it occurs but with kingdom death monster it's all open for discussion it's all of control 
and so it takes it, it's more difficult because we have all these different levers and buttons we can we can manipulate but is was actually a bit more akin to f mindset because we all we all saw what we could all do right so we could also we could discuss in more detail what was going on but i feel like the stakes weren't quite as high as with kingdom death monster so the pressure wasn't as intense as with kingdom death monster because with kingdom death monster that any minute you can just lose a character altogether <laughs> i think Madara fucking sucked because of the deterministic like what the enemy is going to do like right. you know what the enemy and that's the other do thing too. we always knew what the enemy was going to do yeah i think that's the enemy just literally had yeah if it doesn't yeah. do one it does two if it doesn't do two it does three if it doesn't do three it does four so we always could tell what was going to do but kingdom yeah. death monster you don't know what's going to do because the cards are flipped up and then you're like oh shit <laughs> like, what the... you know, yeah yeah because i think gloomhaven felt like planning for the like highest outcome like you plan for the outlier yeah. outcome on the top and then Kingdom Death Monster is yeah. planning to yeah, mitigate, yeah, yeah. right? Like we plan so much to mitigate damage and then Midara yeah, is just, yeah. you can do both. And that <laughs> is fucking stupid. I mean, I think, I think part of what it comes down to is like the combat systems, right? Where Midara and Kingdom Death Monster are both are dice based. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when you're weak in Kingdom Death Monster, it's like, okay, I have to roll an eight or a nine to hit, right? Mm-hmm. And so you're trying to like, okay, how do I increase my chance to hit? Right, so I can actually kill this monster. Where I felt like it was similar in Madara, where you're like dicing yourself, and so you're you're trying to increase the number of rerolls and stuff you can get in Madara. Mm-hmm. And I think in Gloomhaven, there's less of that dice rolling aspect. Which yeah, after playing more Kingdom Death, I think Kingdom Death Monster was the game that kind of helped me understand the appeal of dice a little more. Because, like, when you roll that crit on, like, that one mm-hmm. part you really need, yeah. it feels really yeah. fucking good. That's what yeah. I was saying earlier, <laughs> earlier before. Like, I feel like the best highs that I've had, personally, with all the games we played were in Kingdom Death Bots. And those were the best highs. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think it's because it's contrasted with all of that, like, gloom and all that suffering. And when you when you get that, when you get that fucking sick, like, crit, or you, you get that resource that you needed, or you finally, like, piece together that suit of armor that you've been trying to get this entire time it feels so fucking good and you feel incredible when it when it all pans out i agree to that we already talked a lot about the gear and the looting about how the kingdom of death monster and the medora have a combined pool and you're trying to kit basically in kingdom of death monster and medora you really don't have a character like we all adopted a character but the premise is that we're all controlling all of them right like we have it's mm-hmm. all open information let me put it that way so you're not like directly controlling one player's actions but i think we in madara and kingdom death monster because we're human beings decided to you know like adopt a certain person so that we could control their mechanisms and feel right. ownership for that person and, and i think honestly i think we needed to do that if we didn't do that it would have been a lot harder to make decisions which would made the gameplay a lot worse because it would have taken a lot longer play the games i think we did balance that with a very good job of making sure that we were doing the right thing for the party but at the end of the day the person who was controlling that person had the Mm. the final say right and without that then yeah i mean i feel like in that aspect like gloomhaven is where the goal is individualized it kind of does give you the opportunity to like be like i'm gonna go open this chest even though i know yeah adam wants it like I'm gonna go pick up these four coins in this corner because yeah, like you guys and, and leave Adam where there's like the small the demon. <laughs> <laughs> there's like small moments of like <laughs> I can go be a selfish dick yeah. in the corner. Whereas like in Madara and in King Death Monster, it's like okay, it doesn't matter who gets what. Like how do we collectively beat this scenario or this hunt together? And I feel like you kind of like those little moments where you can be a dick to your teammates <laughs> in Gloomhaven, where I feel like right. you couldn't really do that. You couldn't have the opportunity in, in either of the other games. Well, it was more collective, right? Like like we said, the, in Kingdom Death Monster, we all had to be extremely aggressive and, and try to take those chances. Like, we had to all try to seek those out for each of the each of the characters, or else you weren't going to get there. Like, a lot of the missions, we appointed somebody to go around and just go collect all the, you know, the plants, all the yeah. ads, yeah, the plants in the, in the Kingdom Death Monster, because... If you don't collect every single resource, then like you're gonna fall behind. So, and we had somebody appointed to doing all that, you know, and they basically weren't participating in the combat at yeah. all. 
Yeah, the, and then we, in Medora, you, oh. I don't know. In Medora, I don't know. We're saying like Kingdom of Death Monsters about mitigating, but then we also say that Kingdom of Death Monsters about maximizing. I guess the I guess the reality mm-hmm. of Kingdom of Death Monsters is about min maxing. That's like well, that's like it the is. whole. Yeah, it's like it's true. It's like min maxing the game. <laughs> it's what it's what Kingdom mm-hmm. Death Monster kind of is. So I that's I guess that's why we keep bouncing between the two of them because they're both true. It's basically embodies greed, right? Mm. Like you have to continue to pursue your your greed to gain more prosperity but by doing that you're falling into you know like pitfalls and yeah. potential like losses yeah so you have to you you're, you're, you're thinking about how to get the most out of this while while keeping your people alive and not like <laughs> and right. minimizing the, the potential chaos that could occur to your characters and you like it gets wild like you get like your characters get like these like not necessarily lifelong but they get these debilitating wounds like they can lose like <laughs> limbs or like an eye and all sorts of stuff and get and like lose yeah. stat points and like they can be debilitated for the rest of their yeah. career like so you like there's like real stakes like if you take a bad hit from a monster and you roll badly oh your, your character might as well yeah. be dead when you know based on how they get <laughs> handicapped like it's 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 brutal what happens to your characters in kingdom death monster no the, the secondary use for them was they can roll the dice on having yeah exactly room. yeah that's yeah. it <laughs> you see that is that you can risk them in childbirth that is one of the big differences between kingdom of death monster and gloomhaven slash madara gloomhaven slash madara you get fucked up in a scenario guess what you're back to life like no no repercussions mm-hmm. maybe you don't get as much experience or maybe you can't you have to do the scenario again but like the characters regenerate completely after every scenario kingdom of death monster is not is not the same thing like you will be punished if if your character gets fucked up you the character will remain fucked up for like a, for like a while unless there's some way to heal them. Yeah, that's funny. I wrote down like leveling up or progressing your characters and I was like, what is that in Kingdom Death Monster? That's what this is. <laughs> you take a hit from the monster and that's how your character progresses. They get some debilitating <laughs> fucking yeah, injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they now yeah. like suck. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. No, there there are the experience breakpoints like every four experience you got to like roll a dice on the table oh, and yeah. you get that's a stat yeah, yeah. or whatever and th- that actually did help, right? Cuz like I think our main character did luck out, and she got like luck, which is a lot of chance, chances, right? right. So, yeah. How however able to kit her out to crit on like a two? Your mm-hmm. luck, luck in King, in Kingdom Death Monster is just uh, mwah, the best stat. Uh, it feels so good to crit on like on like a good hit location. Absolutely, yeah. There is character progression, but there's like there's definitely like equipment progression. Like you get as you fight yeah. better monsters, or sorry, as, as you fight more monsters, you get more different types of armor sets which which grant different abilities but also just offer more protection to your characters basically it basically like increases your character's mm-hmm. health pool which like helps them stay mm-hmm. stay alive longer and then that i guess that's also the system built in to mitigate your characters being killed off because many of your characters will be killed off you can move that armor set over to a new character so you don't have to completely start mm-hmm. from scratch so you know right. i guess it's built in i suppose very specifically for that i think that's one thing that Kingdom of Monster and Gloomhaven do well is that like refresh. You know, you get to retire in Gloomhaven and you get to like kill off your character in Kingdom of Death Monster. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, that, like you mentioned, Dave, there are the progress points, but they do something significant. But when you start off with a new character, it's a lot of it's about the gear. Having the gear, even for a base character, like a base character can, can perform okay in Kingdom of Death Monster just based on their yep. gear. With Gloomhaven, you get the retirement system. Where after you played it for a while, then you get to go and play a new character, you know, explore that character. And then again, Madara had like shit. I think we found like two different characters that we could play through the whole time playing Madara. Almost through three chapters out of five. Honestly, I was keeping playing, like waiting for that to happen. I was waiting for more characters to keep coming so we could have more variability and have the ability to play different characters. I don't know how many there are total, but it definitely didn't feel like that refreshed enough or yeah, even often enough you're ever. right it didn't something about how the game unfolds even though it seems like there's a lot of options for customizability it doesn't really feel like it opens up that much over time i, I right. yeah I, I would agree with you on that like you guys are both basically capped out like you guys both basically on your characters you started with them and you i think Raphael, you changed like very much at the end but like you both basically kitted out an entire character all the way. Mm. Like you were at the point where you had to spend so many XP points to get another skill that you were going to have that character for the next like seven or eight encounters. And it was going to be the same exact character. Yeah. Through one campaign of Gloomhaven, how many times did we, 
I remember the second time we were a bit more lax about how we unlocked, how we switched our characters. But how many times did we mm-hmm. each switch characters in the second playthrough of Gloomhaven? I mean, can I actually, I could actually tell you, but it was probably around four, four. times each. Because I remember I played, well, does, does, do spoilers matter in this podcast? No, okay, no, cause, no, I'll put a thing on the front. To I spoilers. remember, or spoilers okay, I remember I, let's see, I, like for myself, I think I started with, who the fuck did I start with? I started with. Well, the second time we, w- we did open world, we because we did it on tabletop simulator, we just said all the. Oh yeah, we played it what we wanted. So I played yeah. with that, not whatever the crag heart, is, whatever race he Boy. is. Oh. There's a another person yeah. who used like elements. I forgot. I forgot what race they were, but they used elements to do stuff. I forgot what they were. Savas. Yeah, the, yes, the, the crevasses. The elementalist or. The ele- I guess it was like elementalist. I think I started with that. I remember I played the summoner. I remember I did that for a while. The diviner. Mm-hmm. Weren't you the Void Warden too? Void Warden. That, that, I think. But what was the one that? Void Warden, the... I think, is Jaws of the Lion. Oh, what well, was the one that put the different oh, hexes, hexes on the ground think... and that's, then you attacked the, yeah. from them? The I think that expansion. was the first playthrough. That was the first playthrough, I think, that I that I used. No, the, oh. the hexes. Hexes was like circles of expansion. No, no, right? no, 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 no. Hexes. No, no, no. No, there was right. another one. Yeah, I can't remember too. who it was. It was like the Doom Doomstalker. Doomstalker. Yeah, I played Doomstalker. that during the first the first playthrough. Oh. But I did. Yeah, I did. Summoner, the Elementalist, the Diviner. Uh, it might have been. I might have only played three for the second playthrough, actually. But still, that's like you know, that's a that's a that's a three is a pretty good number of characters to go through for a campaign. Like that's I I think that's an ideal number three. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like is more than that, what, like it becomes forty scenarios, it, something like that. It becomes yeah, like any more than that, it becomes it, it kind it's kind of a bit much. <laughs> I think I think three is a really good number of different of like like different characters like. Of, of a variety to go through and within a right there a are campaign. some more things that, topics that i wanted to get to though so maybe this abrupt cut does help us get into a different direction all right let's start with a quick one and then um move on so artwork graphic design story obviously mm. like the midara they put a lot of effort into the story in, in yeah and big ditties <laughs> and <laughs> a lot of the kingdom death monster like also titties <laughs> Also, titties. <laughs> yep. But the story, I don't know. What, what do you guys think about? The, let's start there. What do you think about the Kingdom Death Monster story? Uh the Kingdom Death Monster story is like gloom and despair, very like survival, but like trying to find I mean, maybe like the light in the darkness sort of thing, like trying to flourish mm-hmm. in this like desolate, like landscape sort of thing, like mm-hmm. trying to flourish among all of this death and despair. It's very loosely a story, right? It's it's more like it's more like a situation <laughs> that is ex, that is ex, that is expanded very upon. True. Instead of like instead of like a narrative is how I would put Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah, I mean there is a little bit of narrative in Kingdom Death Monster. Like you wake up and like every sometimes there's an event. It's like these people who are like heavily armored come walking into your encampment and like shove a halberd into the ground, and you can like try to pull it out of the ground. And you pull it out of the ground, it's just like fucking bonkers spear. That's true. Or whatever. Right. So like there is some precedent and I think what I think Kingdom Death Monster it deliberately doesn't have like a set storyline because they want it to be replayable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You gotta do yeah. The year to year pacing the though of Kingdom Death Monster I didn't really feel like a year to year pacing though. It didn't really feel that like the story didn't really feel that immersive, I guess. Yeah, it. I, you know what? You know what I would say about Kingdom Death Monster though. Kingdom Death Monster did the best. It it definitely immersed you in the environment. I felt very immersed in the environment itself. Mm-hmm. I didn't really feel immersed in like the narrative, but I certainly felt like I was like in that like fighting the boss in that place, like fighting that boss, like trying to survive, like like making it through that hunt the best way I could possible. Like I definitely felt like I was very much invested in that. But in terms of the overall narrative or whatever the general like flow of, of whatever was going on on top, that didn't really stick with me that much. It was definitely also a theme of like having a population sort of like grow and expand mm-hmm. and build upon itself and, and so on and survive, basically. Yeah, it was a holistic approach almost. Like you're almost playing God in that, right? Yeah. Like you're not really playing a character, you're almost playing God. Yep, yep. It's just a story of your people staying alive. It's just amongst like the worst possible adversity you could ever imagine right and the hunt I, i'm glad you brought that up i think the hunt was like probably the most immersive part 
Yeah. Where you really honestly feel like you're like preparing for this battle and you're like looking for the monster. Yeah. And you come across all these different shortcomings or, or boons yeah. across the way. I don't think we even talked about the hunt. Maybe we did, but the, the hunt, like for, for context, so the game is divided into, Kingdom of Monsters is basically divided into three major parts. There is the sort of like the building, kidding, expanding phase where you're like back in your village and you're just trying to build and, and have babies and choose who's, who chooses going out for the next monster mm-hmm. encounter, whatever. So there's that whole phase. Then there's the hunt phase where you're basically going through a bunch of different events, hoping to eventually run into the monster and start fighting it. And most of those events are quite negative. And like all sorts of shitty things that happen to you. Sometimes good things happen as well. Sometimes you find an item. Sometimes a person gains a status, something like that. But it's usually something pretty terrible is happening to you. And then there's the, the battle phase where you fight the monster. The hunt is the part of the game where you have the least control over. Cards are flipping. And you read the cards and you roll dice and whatever happens, happens. You have the, you have the least control during the hunt and a lot of terrible things happen to you during the hunt. For example, when we were, there's a monster called the Phoenix and when you hunt and the, the Phoenix has control over time and during the hunt, some of the events are time-based and they can literally age your character out of existence. When we fought the Phoenix for the first time, we lost one or two characters before we even got to the Phoenix. And we had to end up fighting the Phoenix with, I think it was two characters. And we still won, but it was, it was a shit show and it felt very dire. <laughs> I did not expect yeah. that we would win. But like the hunt is absolutely punishing. And, and because of that, you're just like engage and just like hoping to just just praying to god that nothing catastrophic happens mm-hmm. so midara i did kind of get the feel though that i was playing a scenario and i think the thing that for midara that did it for me was those like little objectives that you could do during the scenario that gave you some benefit mm-hmm. those like felt achievements. like extremely thematic that it like really matched what you were trying to do during that scenario and it gave you some kind of extra goal to fight for because Madara was pretty bland on its own, I guess. Maybe, maybe we should have, like, pumped it up. So I don't know if we even could have, but like, yeah, we had to turn up the... I guess, yeah. We had to turn up the intensity on Gloomhaven. I think we, if we had the option, we would have turned up the intensity on Madara, too, because I think it just wasn't there for us. I think we were just a lot stronger players than the game was giving us the option. There was that one fight where I voted no. And you guys were like, yeah, let's fight this guy. We got to fight There was that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, like, the, the big, like, lion god thing. The lion yeah. deity. They just I got, I got outvoted. <laughs> it, it's like the game is telling you, like, you're not supposed to fight this guy. It wasn't even, there wasn't even, like, a, a glimmer of a chance. It, we just, like, like, immediately. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, it's, it's with, with Madara, like, if it was Gloomhaven or, like, Kingdom of Monsters, maybe there's a chance. But with Madara... There's no chance. He was like on a, he was like he was like level fifty. We're like level like five. It's like not fair. I was like no balls, you won't. <laughs> but Madara, I guess, had a lot of also like it being so story driven. It was pretty easy to fall into the story. Yeah, and like fall into the story of the scenario, fall into and the fact that they change scenarios back to back to back too. I think also helped with that immersion. Yeah, like you don't rest in between. Like it's just like you're you're, you're on the same chapter of the book or whatever and like you haven't reached a conclusion yet so you're like you're still continuing on right yeah whereas gloomhaven i don't know if I, I just did not feel immersed like I, yeah i did not pay nope. any attention to what was nope. going on it was a euro it was high, heavily just a euro. yeah yeah I, and that it was, was it. for me it was all about the battle <laughs> progression and the progressing your character abilities and equipment and i yeah i did not follow the story at all <laughs> right yeah i mean i think gloomhaven's weak in that sense because like you can literally stop in the middle of a scenario like of the chapter like 11 12 13 is the story you'd be like 11 now nah, i'm gonna go fuck over here and like scenario yeah, 53 yeah. Yeah. and you come back to 12 yeah. you're like what yeah. the hell happened where were we <laughs> yeah it's true there were a lot of side scenarios that they encourage you to do in yeah gloomhaven. that's so interesting i've never progress your character i've obviously never thought about this but i would say kingdom death monster for me was the perfect amount of story it was like not re- like mm-hmm. barely a story, but the thing about Kingdom Death Monster, what you do is the story. Like the, all the yeah, you're yeah, you, the story. you are, like yeah. what you're doing is the story. The monsters you choose to hunt, how the hunts progress, the different things that you build in your settlement, the different things you unlock, that is the story. And I think that was that was perfect because everything you need to pay attention to 
you're automatically invested in you are paying attention to because it's the game is the story and i think that's actually really awesome now that i think about it agreed and the one thing you just touched on there too was the adventure selection portion of the games like i think kingdom death monster you have like infinite you could even like turn one. You could choose to fight a level three and die. Like yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You can just do whatever you want <laughs> and fight whoever you want. And you progress when you feel like you're ready to progress. And you do, like you choose your own adventure. Yeah, yeah. Mid- whereas like, Midara is the complete opposite of that. Like there mm. is no choice. Yeah, there you is have no. at the towns. Mm. You can choose to go on side quests, I guess. Yeah. But that's really like the only choice that you have in the game. The, yeah, yeah. The story is written. It progresses linearly. It progresses the same way every time you play the game. Mm. Yeah. And then Gloomhaven is somewhere in the middle, right? It is, yeah. There are side quests. You do get some choice, but the yeah. story is, is all pre-written. And, like, if you make the same choice in a different playthrough, you're going to get the same result. Yeah. Yeah, Gloomhaven does. Yeah, you, your choices do determine how the story branches off. But, like, yeah, it is. you're absolutely right. It is somewhere in the middle between Kingdom Death Monster and Madara. I mean, we played through Gloomhaven a couple of times. And, like, mm-hmm. there's the good version and the bad version. And there is, like... Like, yes, the, the story and the overall playthrough is different, but, like, the party reputation, whatever, does have an impact on some of the events, city events, yep. road events, whatever. So, like, it does. Yeah. There is that minor influence you have on Gloomhaven, but at least in Gloomhaven, like, it's far more profitable to be, to be evil, like, to be bad, to be, have, like, a bad reputation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, significantly, so. Except for the stuff in the shop costing more, but yeah. But you, get, but you get more gold that outweighs the. That minor in- increase in in gold. <laughs> Bad boys. <It's> true. <laughs> Bad boys. Uh, that was fun. That, I mean, uh, those are topics I wanted to hit on. Do we have any more like? I mean, I think, best moments like, or what? What else you guys wanna? What else you guys wanna c- cover? I mean, the artwork. I think we touched on this briefly, but like, I dislike the art in both Cam Death Monster and Madara just because it's like typical. I don't know, like sweaty neck beard. Oh, anime titties. <laughs> Got him. I, Gonna put him in my game. I, actually, I was very disappointed with that too. I actually think I enjoyed the art. Like obviously the like the, the fan service stuff was for sure a little annoying. But I actually enjoyed the Kingdom Death Monster art the most, actually by far. I think I enjoyed the Madara one the least because it felt the most immature. Yeah, childish. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it felt childish. The, the Kingdom Death Monster stuff felt very fan service but it still felt very like it's it's still it's, I, I love the gothic like dark feel like it still had a very like yeah, adult I theme that. that I really enjoyed. Gloomhaven mm-hmm. art I never really vibed with that much. I just thought it was kind of eh if I'm gonna be honest. For art I would vote for Kingdom Death Monster personally. Gloomhaven was a lot of fantasy tropes too. Yeah, it was a lot of the like oh this is the big beefy guy. Yeah. He's the tank. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the little puny thing. Yeah. Oh, it's the range it's GPS. Like, is, it's okay. like it's and like no gnomes. Was- Gnomes yeah. without gnomes, elves without elves. And noble paladin and like, stuff like that. Yeah, it was very... It, yeah, it, it exactly. played it pretty much yeah. down the line with their art. Yeah, Kingdom Death Monster, I think, would be the best game to own from an artwork style. And I think mostly because of the minis. The minis are just... They have to be impressive. All of these games we play digitally, but the minis for Kingdom Death Monster have to be yeah. impressive. The, uh, the monster minis, I mean, yeah, this is like massive. These behemoths that you... Tra- uh, yeah, it's, it's really something special for sure. There's so many expansions, so many different monsters, so many different like settlements. Settlement! That's the I think that's the word I was looking for this entire time. Settlement. Yeah, there's so many different like so starting awesome. settlements you settlements you can do. Like there's there's a lot more. You just wanna rate them overall and get out of here? What do you think? I mean or you wanna like, I mean, do you have a, a big moment that you wanna talk about? Like something. I think it's remember? pretty clear how we would rate think... them. I think we would rate them Gloomhaven, Kingdom Death Monster, Bandar. I think it's pretty clear <laughs> what we would how we would rate them. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, what we've been talking about before, like, what we're going to play again, like, we already got Gloomhaven Digital again to play at some point mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. We didn't finish Mundar, so there's no reason yeah. we'd ever go back. And, like, mm-hmm. I could see a world, though, rare, where we could revisit King King yeah. Death Monster, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. But if you both really wanted to, I'd be like, but, okay, fine. The like, only reason I think it probably again. wouldn't happen is because we'd be, we already know we're going to play Frosthaven when it comes out. So, like, we already know, like, right. what's going to happen right. for, like, a year or something. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> if we're still playing board games together in, in another, like, two years or so, and we're, like, looking for something else, and, you, and someone is like, hey, you guys want to ch- check out... Kingdom Death Monster expansion, you know, that that's the world where it might happen, I think, where we go into that again. Mm-hmm.
be, I don't know, two years, you know, maybe, maybe both Dave and Adam are going to have kids and I'm just going to be like still trying to find a girlfriend or <laughs> still trying to hold the relationship down. And it's going <laughs> to, you guys are going to be all busy raising your toddlers. And then eventually if you wait long enough to play a board game. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> wow. I, uh, <laughs> you know, it's full, it comes full yeah, circle. It's how it works, let's, right? Let's revisit this in 15 years and see where we're at. <laughs> I'm going to play Kingdom Death Monster yeah. as a 12 year old. That's where I think I'm going with this. Uh, I think you got to probably be like 14, <laughs> 13 before you get to see that art. Oh, man. Well, I guess we could maybe ask everyone what their favorite things about each game was or is. Okay. You start. You want to go around by game or you want to go around by person? We'll go by game. We can go by game, sure. Let's start with Kingdom Death Monster, I guess, just because that's what I was going to say right. just now. Kingdom Death Monster, I really enjoyed the epicness of the fights. No other game was, like, neither Gloomhaven nor Madara could match the sheer epicness of those scenarios. I think we should do biggest positive and biggest negative. Just you know, Sure, biggest balance. negative yeah. of Kingdom Death Monster. I don't even know. I don't even know what my biggest negative is. What did, what did I really... The point of the game is for it to be punishing, but sometimes it was just like, what? I mean, come on. <laughs> sometimes it's just like, Jesus Christ. Like, this is, this, <laughs> like, is just, just oppressive. For no for no, yeah, sometimes it's just not oppressive, like, for <laughs> no reason. It's like, this is, like, coming, like, unenjoyable at this point. I would, I would say for me, like, my, that was my honest, most negative thing. But, like, overall, like, I really enjoyed, like, building the armor sets and, like, expanding your characters and then mm -hmm. seeing like seeing them evolve and grow and stay alive like i really enjoyed all of that but the fights were like the fights were really awesome i think my thoughts are pretty similar with kingdom death monster i think the highlights for kingdom death monster is like finally getting to like see the the avenue like oh, okay if we do this specific thing we can like reborn this character and get all the stats and like become stacked mm -hmm. and like being able to see like the pathway and like the intricacies within the game of how to win and I think the least favorite thing is going to be just dice, right? Say you're, like, hitting this monster. It's like, okay, I'm going to hit this monster. I have, like, a 90% chance to hit. I hit on, like, everything but a critical miss. And I have, like, three chances to kill it in the last hit. And then you just fucking Raphael roll and roll once. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there were several times where that happened. Where you're like, oh, my character just fucking broke all his ribs because I rolled, like, three ones in a row. <laughs> Right, oh. like it's like those those fringe lows where you critically fail multiple times in a row. Like they yes, yes, they do get balanced out by the time when you like critically succeed, but it's like human psychology to remember yep. the ones yeah, where you really yeah, yeah. fail rather than the ones critically mm -hmm. succeed. No, so I think it's just yeah. yeah, that's just that. It's just like ultra punishing and like this is like the very fringe case that was supposed to be like me finishing the monster instead I got finished by the monster, which I guess is like, you know, part of the appeal. Kingdom Death Monster really revels in your destruction. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> for me, I really love the way we structured our playthroughs because it hit the high at the, at the beginning and the low at the end for me. So the high for me, I think, was the hunt. Mm. I know we talked about how punishing it is and how you're just trying to get through it, but I love that exhilaration of, like, flip that card, what's it going to really? be? Really? Okay. Especially since we fought a lot of monsters for the first mm. time. I mean... The monsters that we refought, we basically like refought two monsters a lot, and then a lot of monsters once. Uh -huh. So every time you're going through the hunt for the first time, and it's like this whole new exploration yeah. of what's it going to be, what things are we going to encounter, and how is that going to affect us? That was us. cool. Yeah. I like that part. The part I hated was the that one big deck that you flip once uh -huh. a year, and then like something yeah. random happens. <laughs> the events. <laughs> The events were so <laughs> such a, so yeah. dumb every like, single time. That was the the being an asshole to be an asshole yeah, part you, for me. You know what the like, worst like, one okay. was? We got the, the we one got that, that one would event. destroy all of your fucking. What was it? The ass? What was you it? Use half. Yep. Yeah, you use acid, acid rain. You, you yeah. we got that twice. That was the worst one. I think we actually house ruled it right where we 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 did it so we wouldn't see an event twice. What we're supposed to do is shuffle the event deck every time, every yeah, single yeah, time. Yeah. So you yeah, but there's one in there that's like oh somebody from the hunt just died. Sorry. <laughs> yep. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> or there's the one where is the one where someone becomes like bloodthirsty or something, and then they kill someone yeah. else, murder someone. And then yeah. if, yeah. And then if, if, yeah. if you roll badly on your village, your village chooses to then kill the murderer, so you just lose like two people. It's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the game just feels like, yeah. <laughs> I think we bookended the playthroughs pretty well. 
I think you're supposed to probably start every year with uh, flipping the card and then end every year with the monster. I think that's how the rules are written, mm. but I like the way that we did it, where we started with the hunt and then ended with the stupid reset, yep. year reset with the, the random flip. I guess let's talk about Madara. Madara. Uh, like our favorite things our favorite things about okay. Madara and least favorite things. My favorite thing about Madara, what did I enjoy most about Madara? Uh-oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're supposed to balance it out. Rafael. What do you mean? What do you mean? You're to have a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's what. It can't just be all oh, bad oh, things. Oh, 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 I see. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to. No, I did enjoy some parts of Madara. I think. What's the thing I enjoyed about Madara? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I enjoyed. I think honestly, what I enjoyed about Madara was I enjoyed my character. I enjoyed like flying around and just like stabbing mm. shit. Like, I had like the daggers, right? Like I really enjoyed my backstab build. Like I enjoyed, I guess I gratuitous. Yeah, I enjoyed of like the feeling of like just dealing out like an insane amount of damage on my turn. Like I thought that was pretty cool. But I don't know. I'm trying to think about something that's spe- specific to Madara that I really, really enjoyed. And I'm I'm having a hard time coming up. You know, you know what? I thought that I would really enjoy like the system where I can like I have all these abilities and I can literally build a character however I wanted to. But like that, just at the end of the day, that just felt like that just felt like okay. I wasn't really that enthralled by that. I think of all the characters, though, your character probably had the most flexibility yeah. of what paths you could go because your ability was so and in, like your innate ability was just yeah, fly. I could just like go so anywhere. Good. Yeah, yeah. So I, that it was just yeah, it was so flexible that you could kind of do whatever you wanted. Yeah. You really could do whatever you wanted. You weren't really pigeonholed into doing anything. Yeah, I guess my favorite thing was that I could just build. I could choose a character. It was, a, it was almost it was almost like a blank template. It wasn't exactly a blank canvas, but it was it was almost like a blank canvas, and I could just kind of build whatever I want on top of that. Like it wasn't as enthralling as I was hoping it would be, but it was still probably my favorite thing about Madara. I would say that I can think of, yeah. At least everything was. I felt like Madara took way longer, especially in the in the end when I got that summoner build, and everything just mm-hmm. took like so long to go through it. At the end of our playthroughs, it started feeling just like it just started feeling grueling. I was just like, oh, this is this isn't really fun anymore <laughs> i got it yeah that's one of the things we didn't talk about actually was like how many rounds a typical scenario mm. takes like in kingdom death monster it probably took like eight to ten rounds somewhere in there gloomhaven maybe a little bit more mm. but midara was always like four but the turn was super long what yeah the midara the turns yeah. are super long because there's so many like every yeah. there's like three different enemy types they all get to go and then you all get to go and if you have summons they get to go and then sometimes mm. The boss can summon something, and that gets his own turn. And you randomize the order all over yeah. every single time. Madara mm-hmm. seemed really susceptible to very long turns, but still, all of our playthrough sessions were like the same amount of minutes. Yeah, but for some for about. some reason, with Madara, it just felt maybe just because it wasn't as fun as the other two. Maybe that's it. Maybe it just mm-hmm. wasn't as engaging as Kingdom Death Monster was, or and it probably just wasn't as fun and stimulating as Gloomhaven was. That you know, maybe it just didn't have those factors going for it, and so it just felt more grueling even though it took the same amount of time i think what it was is that you're just rolling dice and i felt like with the symbols even doing the math from the symbols was annoying oh yeah you know what i forgot about that you're You're like like, doing the math you're like oh all these fucking symbols okay i have my base damage with the numbers oh and then my ability adds this my weapon adds this and then this weapon has all the stars and shields and books and so this is printed 13 damage, yeah. but it's actually like 54. And then you got to subtract, the you subtract the monster and all the monsters' buffs and whatnot, and then figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the monster's like, oh, wait, what's this keyword on this monster? Let me yeah. open the rule book and find <laughs> the rule book with this, what this keyword is. Well, I think we figured out what Dave's least favorite thing is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the dice and also just the keywords where they don't tell you what it is on the card. And it's like, the thing that annoyed me the most was the rule book was not formatted or edited in a way that made sense. Mm-hmm. There was a glossary, but it was so not a complete a glossary. glossary. So it's like, this keyword that is very important to this monster and how it functions is not in the glossary. Yeah. So I can't find it. 
and it's like in this random ass yep. table in the middle of the rule book. Like, okay, <laughs> why is this here? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it's like either give me a short description of what this keyword does on the card, or just like have a complete glossary. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just struggling with the rule book and like doing the math was very annoying for me in the dollars. So, like the combat. You have dice, and there's numbers, and there's symbols, and it's just very cumbersome and not smooth. Like, if it's literally just roll a number, give me dice, that's fine. I think a lot of Madara just felt like it was complex for the sake of complexity to not make it, like, mm-hmm. a simple common system. And it felt like they threw it in there to just make it more complicated, because, like, we can't just have it be this, can we? No, let's throw mm. this in there to make it more interesting. And mm. it didn't really make it more interesting. Okay, yeah. what was the positive thing? You can't just have negatives. <laughs> Uh, it's positive when Madara is <laughs> not playing it. That was the best thing ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I think what I did enjoy in the beginning when we first started playing was like the options you had to like build your character, like the different mm. trees. You're like, okay, do I want to go all blue or like do I want to add some yellow in there? And like having the ability and like choice to be like, okay, I want to go this way with my character, and let's okay, maybe let's let's do that and stuff like that. So I think the flexibility of how you build your character in a way like how you can use your experience points to get skill with that i enjoyed that aspect of it it's hilarious because yeah i was gonna say it's hilarious <laughs> because both of you, are like, you know i really like this infinite flexibility skill tree and you're both are like yeah but it really let me down a lot because <laughs> at, at first you're like oh but like these are the, there's all these different abilities i can choose from but then you read them and the abilities are not created equal some of them mm-hmm. just like are ass Right, mm-hmm. like really bad, like maybe over the chance of a, a scenario, you do like one or two damage, which is like very, very low value, right? Yeah. So I think you're excited at first when you're like, "Oh, look at all these options I have," and then you read the abilities. You're like, "Okay, out of all these abilities, like only like two of them are good." So I really only have like two choices instead of like fifteen. And then the level fours, like there was only like three of each, cool. right? And yeah. they were not, yeah, they were not good. Some of them were not good at all, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, I built up, built up. Now I'm on the level four, but I don't want any of these. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. My positive, I think, was the fact that like our best character by far was the one that we created together. <laughs> having Zeke and having that be like the one that we collectively worked on together, and having that one be like the star of every scenario, I think was was a really cool thing for me, and I enjoyed. Enjoyed yeah, that Zeke part of our playthrough. Zeke was fucking shredding near the end of our playthrough. <laughs> he was fucking destroying. Yeah. Oh my god. His thing was no shields, right? And I think if we kept going, like more monsters probably would have had shields, mm. so it probably would have fallen off pretty quick. But but he had both the armor piercing yeah. arrow and but, the no yeah, armor if, arrow. If something, if something yeah. had so, no armor, he would he would just shred them. Like it was yeah, it was pretty sick. Yeah. I think it was cool that that was like our collective character that we made together. The I mean I don't really need to go into yeah. yeah, the negative. We already yeah. talked about enough of them. <laughs> Gloomhaven, I loved Madara. I thought it would be cool to like you know build my character however however I wanted, like have all these different options. But interestingly enough, mm-hmm. Gloomhaven gave me the perfect amount of freedom but also like constraints where i was i was so happy like they gave me just enough rope to like not hang myself <laughs> and i was like this is mm-hmm. perfect mm-hmm. my favorite part of the is probably leveling up like leveling up and like getting choosing new abilities like oh my god what am i gonna choose how am i gonna become stronger augment, augment my deck that was my my favorite thing is just like progressing my character and becoming stronger i love that in gloomy it felt so good and like just like fleshing out my combo and getting stronger and stronger abilities oh and then by the time you, you've maxed your character out, you just feel like a god almost. You're just like just shredding all your enemies and you're just like over these broken abilities and so on. It was amazing. Yeah. And let's see. Honestly, my least favorite part about Gloomhaven is a story. Every time, like, you know, Dave was, is our kind of like assigned reader of the <laughs> reader of the lore is pretty much what Dave is. Mm-hmm. And every time mm-hmm. Dave would read the Lord, you know, no, no fault on Dave at all, but I would just like not really listen that much. <laughs> just be like, I don't, I just didn't really care about the story in Gloomhaven at all. That was my least favorite part of it. Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven had a story. I just, I just, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. like, what do we have to kill? Like, what do you have to, who do you have to protect? Like, let's. Yeah, it was like, yeah, Kale and Jack I just Sarah, wanted remember? to get in. Remember? 
And then there's the dragon. There's the gloom. Yeah. There's the, the, gloom. Name, the gloom, yeah, right? The gloom name, yeah, namesake. I just, I just wanted to get in and start like fighting. That that's I just wanted to do that and to level up. That's all I wanted mm-hmm. to do. So yeah, favorite part leveling up. Least favorite part, the story. For me, I think Gloomhaven is elegant. And what I like about it the most is just like the actual just gameplay, the gameplay loop, right? Like the turns are dynamic, and the randomness is introduced in not dice. And like the initiative, sometimes you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, this monster is gonna, we're just gonna go over here and kill this monster, right? Nope, initiative one. Like I didn't know that monster could move that fast. What the hell? And it's like doing something that you can't do anything. And you're like, okay, what else am I gonna do? Or like, and I think the satisfaction, I guess, on the flip side of that is like, okay, we have like one turn left. I think there was a couple scenarios where like, okay, in order for us to not lose, I have to go over here, crit <laughs> this monster, yeah, I remember, and then run over I here. I you and Adam. <laughs> This usually happened after I died. <laughs> and then you and you just <laughs> out to figure out, like, okay, what is the best possible line like, to save like this? And like, minutes. and like, yeah, flip, to find the, flip the it's like perfect the, battle like modifiers the, oh, yeah. and everything. I was like, Jesus Christ. What is yeah. <laughs> I think, just, yeah, those those moments are really, are really satisfying. And I guess least favorite for Gloomhaven is, I guess... While there is flexibility in building your character, sometimes when you level up for certain characters, the choices you have for when you level up is not really a choice. One of the cards sucks, mm. and it's like not a viable build, right? I think there's like each character is supposed to have like a couple viable builds, but when you look at the cards and the breakdown and how the game actually plays, mm-hmm. you don't really have a choice mm. on how to build your character because there's a very distinct path of like this card is just worse than this other card. It's not that big of a, a gripe because like I guess there's like no like meme funny builds in Gloomhaven because you're trying to be as powerful as you can because you're very dense hand size so every card has to be useful mm-hmm. so like there's very little opportunity for experimentation because like I mean I use these I'm guilty of using these the, the guides whatever that people post on mm-hmm. those those Imgur like class guides because mm-hmm. it feels like if you don't do that you're playing at a disadvantage your deck has to be hyper efficient and your hand has to be hyper efficient if you're not playing your character to its most optimal strength you're gonna lose mm-hmm. and it's not fun losing you have to kind of have like a guide of like what card to pick when you level up because if you pick the wrong card you're kind of screwed yeah i hope they give a little bit more flexibility in frost haven but i don't know that i want like three choices per level because i think that's the way no do i don't it. want three choices i, I think right. it's just i think three choices would be better but i think also just like it sounds balancing like, the cards better yeah balancing you want better you want card different balance. options yeah, yeah, like yeah. different yeah, archetypes of the same character yeah better build balance <laughs> yeah support for different archetypes because i feel like the only character that did that that was able to do it okay was the berserker one i played with the curses oh where you could go like full poison or like full curses but then actually i went to curse build but because we were playing with like minus two instead of miss when i played that it felt very low impact Oh, it was like yeah. plague something. Plague bringer, plague bringer, maybe plague something like that, bear, or or yeah. whatever. Plague warden. I don't know. No. Actually, plague wardens, I think, from Darkest Dungeon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that was my that was my complaint with Gloomhaven, where there there is an optimal build for each character, in most cases. Plague herald. Plague herald. Plague herald. Yeah. For me, I think. The high, I was going to say the exact same thing as Dave, actually, is the gameplay. One of the things that Dave didn't touch on was the pseudo-randomness that you get with using cards instead of using dice is what really did it for me. I think that was my high. That was my high, my number one, was that it's it's still random, but it's like deterministic enough that you can plan sufficiently. And then it's random enough that your plan goes wrong every time and you have to adapt. I like that back and forth of I feel like I have the agency to plan, but then the randomness makes me have to adapt my plan. Yeah. And I think like too with the deterministic that like absolutely deterministic movement by the monsters also makes the in turn planning. Once it's revealed what the monster's gonna do, then you can you can make a lot more strategic decisions. And that is the height of Gloomhaven for me. Mm. The low of Gloomhaven for me actually is the amount of time you spend with your character. I think that when a character gets to level 9, or as it, even as it approaches level 9, it gets really dull for me. I would rather turn over the characters faster, actually, than, than they do in Gloomhaven. Mm. I would rather It's funny, because I actually thought, I thought you were going to say the opposite, where when you hit level 9, you may not even get to play one scenario with your new level 9 card. 
yeah, before you're tired. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, because no, yeah, for I, me, it's the opposite, and that's completely valid. I'm actually, but I'm actually like, yeah. I actually feel like Dave. I feel like when I get to level nine, finally, I want to revel in that, like that, like max power for a little bit. But I feel like soon after that, you're probably gonna end up retiring <laughs> based based on the curve, typically. I think by then I'm like bored. I'm like on to the next one. That's completely valid, honestly. I think Gloomhaven also had like the best synergies, sort of, because when Dave played like the what was it like Blade Swarm, I think it was something like that, and then that thing was fucking busted. Yeah, and oh, the character super was super not, locked not one. Balanced. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, and then I was playing like I think it was Diviner, and then Adam played something else, and then we would like release elements for Dave to use, and then you would, like, buff Dave, and Dave was just, like, a one-man tank, basically. That was, like, awesome. Like, it's just, like, let let Dave loose and just give him whatever he needs. He's, like, kill everything. That was great. Like, I yeah, I feel like Madara didn't have, like, we or at least we didn't run into synergies quite like that in Madara or Kingdom Death Monster, really. Like, that, no, that's I think, true. There weren't... I thought that was yeah. really cool. There weren't really, like, hard supports. Yeah. Or the other... Yeah, and who was the? I mean, I think who was the hard support character? It was like a song, is like a song weaver or some shit like that. Some, I think Dave oh, played yeah, it. Yeah, the it was the like bard the one I played. That yeah, one. the bard. Yeah, it was, it was so you. Fun. It was you, Adam. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, the the yeah the the bard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was like the no. hard song support, people, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. I like that. Also, I feel like Boomhaven handled summons way better than Madara did. For some reason, with Madara, summons felt tedious. Because, like, with mm. Madara, I had this, like, two summons, and it took forever to go through the turns. But with in Gloomhaven, I used to, like, hate. I couldn't control my summons. But actually, it's kind of good because it just it just goes faster. It just goes way faster. Right. The summon does a thing, I mean, and you can just move on. And, you know. I think that has to do with the math. I feel like every time we rolled, we'd spend, like, fucking two minutes doing yeah, the math and adding the symbols true. and, like, doing that's damage. True. And that got really tedious really quickly. That's also true. Whereas I feel like if it were, like, a computer game, the damage roll happens, like... In half a second, and you're done. And you move mm-hmm. on. Whereas when you're doing it manually, with the way the system works in Madara, it was painful. Yeah, it's true. like okay, sixteen plus three plus three plus four plus one plus five. Yeah. Okay, now minus what? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, my yeah. damage dealt. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Except for that one, like unicorn you had at the end of the summoner in Gloomhaven. Like all of the Gloomhaven summons were significantly weaker, mm. and I think that was another problem too. Is that the Madara summons were like too strong. Mm the gloomhaven ones are maybe like one fifth or one sixth of a character if yeah, that, yeah, yeah 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 and like one half of an enemy yeah. and then like the madara summons were like equal to an enemy yeah yeah no you're right because like i don't think half the summons, or third of a character i don't think this i mean we didn't play a lot of madara scenarios with that summoner character but i don't think the summons ever died <laughs> yeah that's yeah what i'm saying and so yeah you're right i could see that but also the other thing yeah like you said too was that they had a full turn it wasn't yeah, like yeah, yeah. they just did something. It, they weren't deterministic like a monster, mm-hmm. like in Gloomhaven. They actually, like, you had agency to do whatever you wanted with them, and that was... Yeah, at first I hated the Gloomhaven approach to it, where you didn't have control over them, and then sometimes you'd have some control if you played the right card, but after experiencing Madara, was like, no, 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 no. This was, like, this is, like, optimal <laughs> to, like, move you, progress you through. Because also, if you think about it, if you're playing a summoner and you've got, like, three summons... You've got four turns while everyone else sits mm-hmm. there watching you take four turns. It's not as if, you know, it kind of takes mm-hmm. away from everyone else's playtime and everyone else's fun to, to watch you sit down taking four turns and everyone else gets one. It makes complete sense now. I completely understand now why the summons are sort of automated in Gloomhaven. I'm on, I'm on board. So next game we're going to play <laughs> is going to be Gloomhaven. <laughs> I, I are we mean, going back? Are we I, going back, boys? I, I, Gloomhaven Digital? It seems like it. After I mean, we're, what, two more games off from Clank Legacy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we took a, ba- a break yeah. from fantasy RPGs. Yeah. Although there is, like, a heavy fantasy element to Clank Legacy. What was it? It's based off of D&D, right? Like some D&D campaign or something like that? Clank? Yeah. The Acquisitions Incorporated part. The, the, oh, I don't know. Oh. I think Acquisitions Incorporated <laughs> is, like a, is, like, a famous D&D campaign or something, I think, or something. Uh, Shows you guys how much we care about lore yes. and theme. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is a D and D thing. I didn't even know that. I don't know exactly the whole what it is, but I think it was like some famous people did a campaign. It like got watched on YouTube or whatever. People watched it and then they made it into a the theme of the game. I guess I don't know. Anyways, any Cheers. other <laughs> games in the genre that you guys like wanted to try or that you guys heard about that you're interested in? Give it a shot. 
think so. Not what I can think of at the moment. And I'm sure it is. There were some other ones that I brought in, but they weren't really like fantasy. Like I wanted to play Forgotten Waters and Sleeping Gods as like this co-op story driven on that theme, but not like the this heavy fantasy theme that we've been for Kingdom Death Monster, Medora and Gloomhaven. No, there's nothing else that I can think of that I specifically wanted to try. I mean, honestly, I've just been we've honestly kind of just been waiting for Ross Haven to, to drop. <laughs> so... Yeah. It's on a boat, dude. It's on a boat. It's on a boat. It's going fast. <laughs> Maybe. It's supposed to port in Cali, but then they're driving it across the states to like Ohio or something like that and distributing to the Northeast. Did he um, did Fucking he say when bastards. he would he might drop a digital version? No. Okay. I feel like when the first person gets their hand on it, then they're gonna put it into tabletop. Well, I guess I guess more. I meant more like an or like official like you know like. I mean, it took what, like two game? years. I think like he released yeah. the alpha of Gloomhaven Digital with Frost Haven's campaign, mm. or maybe the beta or something. But it was a very early version of Gloomhaven Digital. And honestly, like I got the Gloomhaven Digital with the Frost Haven campaign, and I like think I told you guys at the time it was shit. Like it was actually awful. Mm. That digital implementation of the game was actually like difficult to play, really bad. Wow. And then now, now I like swear by it. I've been playing with oh. a group of friends from high school, and it's like that's why I encourage you guys to buy it. It like we could probably finish the scenario it. in an hour. We could probably. It's finish also it, in an hour. it was free on it was free on Epic Games a while Ooh, ago. Oh yeah, I, after I bought it. So it's had days. I got it on Epic Games too. Anyway, so can is it cross functional, cross platform? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Could see it either way. Yeah, I don't really know either. But, I mean, don't they have, like, MMORPGs on there, too? Like, I mean, it's not like you're going to play GTA, like, only on... Epic? Epic, yeah. Like, Epic can't be in its own silo, can it? It wouldn't have the player base. I think it can be, potentially. I don't know. Hard to say. (laughs) Yeah. All right, guys, we're diverging. Any (laughs) other talking points? Any other topics you guys want to bring up? Anything else about fantasy RPGs, specifically these three that we talked about? No, man, I think we got it all. All right. This is going to be a hearty episode. Our listeners are really going to love this one, I think. Oh, This is probably going to be like a two-hour epic, dude. (laughs) The end. Thank you for listening to Under the Lid, produced by Rattail. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Rattail Games. And also, you can email us at rattailgames at gmail.com. Visit our website, www.rattail.com. We'll continue our story next time. So now I can just I close this have... audacity, right? I should not touch it anymore. I'd like minimize, minimize it. <laughs> just Christ. That's what I'm going to I'm going to hit stop right now and make sure... Uh... I don't know what to call it. Like fantasy RPG board games. Cooperative. Yeah. I would that's, I would say ta- wouldn't call you it, call it tabletop RPG? I, I think that's yeah. just what it is. This is it's a tabletop RPG. Yeah. Okay. But that you, when you think tabletop RPG, you don't think like D and D and Warhammer. It is. Well, it yeah, is it, like, it, it is it, like it, that. It is that though. Yeah. It is. Okay. So actually, if you go into Board Game Geek, Kingdom Death Monster is a fully cooperative tabletop hobby game experience tabletop what tabletop hobby, hobby game i guess that makes sense hobby game experience. Like, okay. that's like very miniature focused yeah well kingdom of death monster is though game. right but we played yeah um yeah it's miniatures with a board game that's what people on top of it. That. no no yeah remember that's what the, isn't that what the designer said that they like they designed a world with miniatures and then made a game like after no that's exactly what it is like kingdom death monsters was a miniature thing and then they just put a board game on top of the miniatures. The the board game was a, was kind of like the afterthought. <laughs> yeah, which is weird. Like who who like makes minis? Like I want to make minis. Cause the, they're cool. What do you mean? People love people. That's it's a hobby. Like miniatures are it's a hobby. Yeah, I been guess. To Kickstarter? Like but like, been to but Kickstarter? like Gundams and shit, right? Uh, it's like there has to be a, a reason for the miniatures, not just like I'm gonna make miniatures that are cool. D and D. It's Gundam the miniatures reason. and there's yes. big city goth girl miniatures. Like I mean, you know. <laughs> Like Madara, <laughs> big titty goth girl, yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah. Madara is like Madara. no, no, no. But Madara is like big titty emo girl. 
and and Kingdom <laughs> Death Monster is Big Titty Goth Girl. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's all right. Gotta save it for the podcast. Oh. It, put that in the podcast. Right. I thought we started. No, he didn't no, no, no. We yeah, started. We do it live. It's a live intro. It's intro. Yeah. Well, just yeah. put that, put that, just cut that in later. Cut that oh, in yeah, later. Oh, yeah, I'll put it in somewhere. <laughs> put it, we do, like, after credits. Oh, okay. After credits. <laughs> All right, you ready? Just my friends it, that I play. Is, is Adam, Adam bristling up, like, Adam, really bad Adam, right now? Adam's like, now, Adam, you sound, you sound absolutely fucked. That's you why sound, he's recording locally, you so sound it doesn't like, matter. You sound like you're getting mouth fucked by the Terminator. That's what you sound like right now. <laughs> Holy shit. He's lagging out real hard. Yeah, you are. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm hearing like Adam from like 20, 2016 or something right now. He's just laughing. Hello. <laughs> All right, that's you my lag bad, so hard. Fucking... You like time travel backwards. Okay. <laughs> my phone. My phone connected to the fucking internet. Oh, rip. For the. So all right. I don't know. Well, okay, I mean, I'll go back you have you have you have it on your end. Oh, yeah. We can't, re- we we can't, re- can't respond. But we can't. But we can't respond to what you just said because only you heard it. What? You, what well, you I said? Is... I didn't hear it. Oh, you didn't hear it, right? Because you. What did you guys? What's the last thing you guys heard from me? Just, uh, I think the last Nothing. thing you said was something about Dave, and then it was just like yeah. absolute, just. <laughs> yeah. Noise yep. After that. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, <laughs> this will be fun. I'll uh, I'm gonna bring it back and uh, we'll start over. All right, somewhere around here. Should I start back with introducing Dave? Then you didn't hear anything after introducing Dave. No, you, you I said hi and then I you responded to what I was saying and then it like all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you said like you said like hey and then after that it was just like computer noise. <laughs>